What up Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, I'm your host Stoss, and today I have Matty B with me. Greetings. And we are back for another game of Warhammer The Old World. So That's right, we are back for another <laughs> game of Old World, and today it is going to be 2,000 points of the Empire of Man versus... The Vampire Count. Ooh, yes, very good, very good. It's it's men versus dead men. Versus <laughs> dead. Yeah, very dead. Um, so, yes, I'm super keen to give this a crack. Um, this will be my first time generally the uh, the Empire on the channel. Um, so that'll be a lot of fun. And this is your first time playing the Vampire Counts, right? Yes, completely. Yes, very good. Matty B is still in the process of building slash painting uh, his own army, so he'll be he'll be leading my vampires today. Um, stuff worth noting. Um, this is my second game of Warhammer: The Old World, and this is Matty B's. The number one first. Numero uno. Uno of numbers. Um, so, yeah, you know, we're going to try and keep it as clean as we can, but expect some stuff to go awry. Yeah. Um, I learned a lot from my first game, so that's great, and hopefully I'll be able to put that experience into the table. Um, but as usual, guys, if you see stuff going wrong, pop it in the comments. Give me a page number and we'll we'll learn this together, this, this new edition. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Um, also, as of now, I am still just using the regular base sizes. I have not gotten spacer trays yet, and I'm not I'm not pulling my models off their bases and redoing them. That's not happening. <laughs> that's a but joke. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Not happening. Um, but I will be investing in spacer trays uh, going forward. So that'll be a thing, but as of yet, we're still on the old base sizes, guys. And we will, you know, math hammer and and measure things out as need be when that happens. Um, but yes, you'll get to see all of that in just a minute. Now, if you enjoy this video, guys, don't forget, go through the YouTube things. It really helps the channel. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. All of this stuff really does help the reach of the video and the growth of the channel. If you want to go the extra mile and support the channel financially, consider becoming a channel member. It is my channel members that are absolutely allowing me to keep investing funds in this channel for all the things, new models, new cameras, all the good stuff. Um, so huge, huge thank you to all of my current channel members. Now. Speaking of channel members, mm. I've got a few new ones to shout out today. <laughs> mm. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. So coming in at core choice membership, we have James Smith, Sebastian P, Thomas Christensen, and Stepan, Stepan Kalisiak. Mate. <laughs> Hopefully. That was a tough one. I gave that a red hot go. <laughs> um, yeah, Stepan. You guys have some crazy names and it's tough. It's yeah. tough for, uh, for a little Australian man. <laughs> but guys, James, Sebastian, Thomas, Stepan. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for deciding to support the channel. It's because of these bosses that you guys get to see these videos. But without any further ado, we'll have a look at the armies. We'll have a look at the table. And then we will get this underway. And here we have my 2000 point list of the Empire of Men, styled after Morgan Bernhard's mercenary company uh, from the 90s games Shadow of the Horned Rat and Dark Omen. Ah, amazing. So yes, this is Morgan Bernhard's mercenary grudge bringer company. Um, now, this army was 3D printed, painted, and incredibly generously gifted to me and the channel by Grayson Brill, who recently came over from, uh, from California to have a game on the channel. And he brought this army with him, played with it, and then donated it at the end of the game. So Grayson, if you're watching, mate, thank you so much. Holy crap, what a ridiculous an amazing human being to have done such a thing. So I'm doing it, I'm, I'm throwing it out there in the old world, mate. Here they are on the table, heck yeah. So let's have a look at the list. Starting out with the general, we have Morgan Bernhardt himself. He is gonna be run as a grand master in this game. And he has been kitted out with full plate armor. He's got a shield, he's riding a barded warhorse. 
He has a talisman of protection to give him a five up ward save. And then in an effort to recreate his iconic grudge bringer sword that his mercenary company is named after. I have equipped him with the giant blade, which gives him plus one strength. It has armor bane two and uh, the multiple wounds two special rule. And he's also equipped with the Ruby Ring of Ruin, allowing him to cast a fireball out of the sword because anyone that remembers in the game, he could cast fireballs out of his sword. Amazing. So there he is, Morgan Bernhardt with his Grudge Bringer sword. Amazing. All right. We also have Lieutenant Shepke, who in this case is uh, being uh, run as a captain of the empire. He's got full plate armor, he's got a shield, um, he's been upgraded to be the battle standard bearer, he has the sword of might, and he, he, uh, he carries the griffin standard. And a unit bearing the griffin standard allows them to get, for every rank bonus they get, they get two. So instead of having two rank bonus, he'll have four in his unit of infantry. Amazing! All right, moving on to the wizards. We have a wizard lord who will be Luther Flamestrike. He is gonna know the, uh, the battle magic lore and he has an earthing rod. And then lastly for the characters, we have Alor who is a master mage and he has uh, the, uh, the, the elementalism lore because he should be a jade wizard. And there it is, that is the, the heroes. Let's have a look at the core. So starting out, we have 10, no, sorry, 11 uh, Empire Bowmen. These are Keeler's Longbowmen, Johan Keeler's Longbowmen, even though they just have warbirds. <laughs> so 11 Bowmen led by the marksman, Johan Keeler. All right, then we have the Grudgebringer Crossbowmen led by Corporal Fletcher. Um, it's just 18 state troops with crossbows and full command. Then we have 19 Grudgebringer Infantry, state troops with uh, light armor, swords, hand weapons, and shields, and they've just got the champion and musician. We have six Empire Knights with full command. These are Sven Carlson's house cavalry here to, to help out the Grudgebringers. Um, yeah, full, full command, lances, heavy armor, shields, barded war horses. All right, and then we have the big unit, the Grudge Bringer Cavalry themselves. These will be run as uh, Inner Circle Empire Knights. There's 11 of them with full command and all of the trimmings. All right, moving into special, we have two great cannons. Yes. And then lastly, in rare choice, we have 15 flagellants. Um, with their, their doom caller, Eusebio the Bleak. <laughs> Great names. And there it is. There it is. It's, uh, it's an interesting list. Um, you know, this, this army was absolutely made with 6th edition in mind. In fact, all of my armies were made with 6th edition in mind. Um, and I've just attempted to, to, you know, change them slightly to fit this new edition. But there it is. There is my 2,000 points of the, the Mercenary Grudgebringer Company. And here we have the 2,000 points of the Vampire Counts that Matty B shall be generaling today. All right, Matty B, take us through it, mate. All right, down in our command, our leader is the Vampire Count. He is wearing the Accursed Armor, which gives him a plus one modifier to his toughness characteristic but suffers a negative one modifier to his weapon skill and initiative. Very good, it also counts as full plate armor. Yes, uh, he is a level one wizard for the point of being a general, but cannot cast spells because of that armor. Indeed. He is also armed with the sword of battle. The sword of battle confers a strength plus one, negative one AP hit with armor bane one, plus one to his extra attacks and magical attacks. Very nice. Um, on top of that, he is also a Dark Acolyte, giving him the ability to use the 
invocation of Nahek. Very nice. He's got a shield as well. Yeah. And a shield as well, yes. Very nice. There he is. Um, yeah, vampires are in a bit of a strange place at the moment where if they wear armor, they can't cast magic. But if you want them to be the general, they have to be a wizard. So, so you know, I had to buy him the level one wizard upgrade. But I wanted to kid him out as, you know, a blood dragon vampire knight. So there he is. There he is, the vampire count. Next, we have our master necromancer. He is a level four wizard with the Scepter of Dean Norut, which gives him the invocation of Hek twice in the command phase. Spicy. Uh, he has also chosen the lore of necromancy um, and carries a hand weapon. Very nice. There he is, the master necromancer. And his acolyte is a level two uh, wizard with spell familiar, which gives him an additional spell and has chosen the lore of illusion. Sweet. Moving on. We have our White King with heavy armor, shield, and the Sword of Kings. The Sword of Kings confers a strength plus one, negative one AP attack with killing blow, which turns his natural six killing blow down to a roll of five and magical attacks. Very nice. Lovely. The White King. Love it. All right, let's move into the core, sir. We have two units of Dire Wolves with a Doom Wolf. There's five in each. Very nice. We have 34 Zombies uh, with Hand Weapon, Stand Bearer, Musician. We have 29 Grave Guard with Hand Weapon, Heavy Armor, Shields, Full Command, and the Drakenhof Banner, which gives them a regeneration of five plus instead of a regeneration of six plus. Gnarly. <laughs> That's gonna be <laughs> hectic. Love that. Our 35 Skeleton Warriors are next. Hand Weapons, Light Armor, Shield, and Full Command. Very nice, the big brick of Skelly Boys. And then we have our two units of Crypt Ghouls, uh, 10 each, and with a Crypt Ghast as their leader. Very nice. All right, moving into the special choices, sir. Our big special choice is the six Black Knights with Lancers, Barded ske uh, Skeletal Steeds, Heavy Armor, and Shield. They're led by a full command and have the standard of hellish vigor, which gives them the special ability, a reserve move. Lovely. Moving on. Three foul bats. And they have claws and fangs. <laughs> very nice, very nice. We've gone, uh, you know, big units. Um, I wrote this list for Matty B um, because, you know, it's my army and I'm more familiar with it. Um, and yeah, I, I lent in heavy into the, the big units because that's the only way that fear goes off now is if you outnumber your opponent, which is interesting, um, with a bunch of chaff to do chaff things. But, but there it is. There it is. The 2,000 points of the Vampire Counts. Rolling up the spells for the Imperial Wizards, starting with my, my Battle Mage, my Battle Magic caster, Luther Flamestrike. He is a level four, so he gets four spells. What does he get? Ooh, he gets Fireball, amazing. Curse of Arrow Attraction, beautiful. And uh, Curse of Cowardly Flight and Arcane Urgency. Hmm, that's pretty dang good. I really would have liked the Pillar of Fire. That's <laughs> upsetting. Um, but I don't think I'm going to change any of those out for the signature spell of Hammerhand. So that's what he's got. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, not bad. All right. And then Alor, the, the Jade Wizard, or in this timeline, you know, the Elementalist, rolling at two spells on the lore of Elementalism. Here he goes. Yeah. Oh, double six. All right. So he's getting at Travel the Mystic Pathways. And here are four earthen ramparts. Interesting. I'm going to keep them. I'm going to keep them. I don't know if this will get useful, but you never know. There might be a situation where I need to just pick up and plonk a unit into a flank somewhere preparing for a charge. Who knows? Um, so yeah, I'll keep them. Earthen ramparts and travel mystic pathways. I really wanted wind blast because it is a, a spicy, spicy magic missile. Um, but there it is. There it is. Those are the spells for the Empire Wizards. Rolling up the spells for the Necromancers from the Vampire Counts and starting with the, the level four Necromancer Lord. All right, mate. Yeah. Very good. All right, so Whoa. so far you've got a five, a three, three and two, two rerolls. <laughs> so Spiritual Vortex and Spectral Steed. A four and a two. Oh, very good, um, mm. On Quiet Spirits, uh, which is the Magic Missile. Yeah. Magical Vortex of Spiritual Vortex. 
Um, Curse of Years, which is a hex, mm -hmm. and Spectral Steed, which is conveyance. That's what I wanted. Ah, fabulous. I'll remove that and I will give him uh, Van Hell's Dance Macabre. Very good. Fumble. Van Hell's Dance Macabre for the level four yeah. and Unquiet Spirit, Spiritual Vortex, and Spectral Steed. Yeah. All right, rolling three spells for for the, the what is he? He's an acolyte, a necromantic acolyte. Who you are? You've got double two and a six. Very good. Six, six a two, and a reroll. Indeed. So far, Shimmering Dragon and Miasmic Mirage. Ooh, I won. Mind Razor, which is a magic missile. Um, and I think what I might do, I'll get rid of him. Get rid of Shimmering Dragon. Yep, and I'm going to give him Raise Dead. Raise the Dead so he can yep. make fresh units of skirmishing zombies. Yep. Spicy. All right, and there are the spells for the Necromancers. And here we are, all set up and deployed for this Dark Omen Battle Report. Yes, that's right, we are setting this game in one of the iconic battles from Warhammer Dark Omen, which was a fantastic Warhammer fantasy game in the 90s, sequel to Shadow of the Horned Rat. Um, starring Morgan Bernhardt and the Grudgebringer Mercenary Company. Um, so for this game, we are uh, traveling a couple of hundred years into the future from the timeline of the old world, back slash forward to old Warhammer fantasy, um, to the, the time of Carl Franz and all of those good guys and old Morgan. Um, so what has been going on is Morgan Bernhardt and the Grudgebringers have been tasked by Carl Franz to, to go and assist one of the border princes, Sven Carlson, uh, with increasing orc activity. And while they're there, they realize that in fact, the orcs are not invading the empire, but fleeing from increasing amounts of undead moving through the Badlands. Um, and throughout their fight and their journey, at one point, Morgan is tasked to, uh, to, to take Isabella von Lieberhertz. <laughs> Uh, he's, he's escorting her to a town along his march, and Isabella is Carl's cousin. Now, throughout this game, or throughout the, the, the timeline, fights are had, and he's done some things, and he goes back to Franz, back to Carl, and he finds out that, in fact, Isabella has been kidnapped by a vampire <laughs> looking to make Isabella von Lieberhertz his dark bride because apparently vampires are obsessed with women <laughs> named Isabella. <laughs> and Morgan is, you know, is forced to go into Sylvania to rescue her. And so Morgan has marched from Altdorf, you know, along the River Reich, through the Moot, and now into the Haunted Hills where he has come to rescue Isabella from this, this dark vampiric fiend. She is no doubt being held in this, you know, this vampire, <laughs> this vampire stronghold, this, you know, this lovely little spot out there. Um, and we are, we're in like a, a defile in the mountains. So on either side are sheer cliffs, and this is a, a vampire little settlement that they have in Sylvania. So that is the narrative. We are here to rescue Isabella from the clutches of the filthy vampire. Excellent. Now that does lead us into the scenario somewhat. So we rolled up a scenario and we got Mountain Pass, which is why we are deployed on the short edges. So it's 12 inches on either side, so 24 inches apart from the center line. Um, and the special rule of this, uh, this mission is that the long table edges are essentially impassable terrain. So there are these, you know, sheer cliffs on either side here, which means that units can't flee off those table edges. If you had reserve units, they couldn't come in from those table edges. And really that's about it. We're just, we're fighting along the long side, which is a bit fun. Um, and it also has a random uh, turn length. So on turn five, you'll roll a die and add the number of the turn to what you've rolled. And if that end, that number ends up being 10 or greater, the, the, the game ends. So on turn five, if we roll at the end of turn five, if we roll a five or more, the game is over. And then it continues from there. So turn six, it'll be on a four plus and so on and so forth. Or until someone concedes. Yes. <laughs> Um, so yes, that, that is the scenario and the narrative. Um, now I generated and placed the terrain pieces in my old style from how I used to do it from 6th edition because I tried the, the, the old world style of placing the terrain and 
I didn't like it as much as what I was already doing, so I have gone back to my old school way of placing and generating terrain. So what we did was we, uh, we generated each piece of terrain one at a time and placed it on the table um, from one of the tables in the back of the sixth edition core rule book. So in the core rulebook, you've got a bunch of different lands and we generated this, this terrain table from the realms of men because Sylvania, still a realm of men, even though it is ghastly and ghouly. <laughs> We were um, once. Yeah, exactly. It was still, it's still technically <laughs> an imperial province. So we rolled on the table, generated a piece. We cut the table into six two foot quadrants. The person that generated the piece places it in one of those quadrants and then scatters it 2d6. And then we go to the next person, generating, placing and scattering. And this is what we have ended up with. It is a gnarly little vampiric Sylvanian like a settlement. So let's have a look at it. We have a wood over here. We got a hill out the back. We have a large building, which will be impassable terrain. We rolled up a farmstead, which narratively got changed into a graveyard, <laughs> um, which is just a large block of uh, difficult terrain. And these are linear obstacles as well. All of the walls will be linear obstacles. Got another wood out in the corner and then a ruin right over here, uh, which will just be difficult terrain as well. Um, and that's it. That's how we generated and put our terrain pieces out. And then, of course, we've just got a few little bushes and shrubs and whatnot just to just to fill it out and make it look like a lived in little world. Um, so, yes, that is the table. Let's have a look at deployment. So going it down the Empire lines here on the far side, we have Keeler's Bowman in skirmish formation. Nooked in one of the woods, we've got one of the great cannon. Next to them, we have the Flagellants alongside the Grudgebringer Infantry, who has the Battle Standard Bearer within it. We've got uh, Luther Flamestrike next to the Grudgebringer Cavalry with, you know, Morgan Bernhardt, the Grudgebringer himself. And then out on the far flank, the little contingent of Sven Carlson's House Cavalry. And then back on Artillery Hill, we've got the Crossbowmen, led by Fletcher, and then the last of the Great Cannon. Oh yes, and of course, Alor, the Elemental Wizard, just chilling in behind. All right, that is the Lines of Men. Matty B, can you take me through the Lines of the Dead? Okay, well, we can start down here. You can see our Black Knights taken on one of the flanks, uh, supported by uh, our White Lord, or White King, sorry. Uh, with the skeletons. Very good. We've got our little host of two two units of um, ghouls and my apprentice necromancer. Very good. The ghouls in the graveyard, of course. Yep. Having a snack. Perfect. Uh, then we've got the zombies in the middle just because they're chaff and I wanted to get them out there. Very good. Uh, followed by our grave guard and my Wizard, level four wizard over here, marching around by himself, much like his friend. Very good. The vampires in the grave guard as well. Yes. We got the uh, fell bats at the back. And because I had my wolves in vanguard, they were originally back here, but they've moved nine. Mm, uh, vanguarding that? forward around yeah. the, uh, the, the, the keep. Very nice. Very nice. And there it is. The lines of battle are drawn and death will be had. <laughs> um, all right, cool. So this is deployment. This is the battlefield. And that was the narrative. All that is left is to roll for first turn. Bum, 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 bum. Are you ready, Matty B? I'm absolutely ready with this dice. Amazing. Good man. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, the Empire, the, the Grudge Ringer Mercenary Company, absolutely finished deploying first. So we are getting a plus one to this roll. But if I'm being honest, I don't want to go first. <laughs> so I'm hoping for a low, low roll. Oh, I don't low. get it. Amazing. Pew, pew, pew. This goes to a three to a five mm -hmm. because at this point I have, you know, held back a little bit. So I wouldn't get much shooting done turn one. So the dead are coming to me. So we will be back with Vampire Counts turn one. Vampire Counts turn one. Strategy phase. 
Um, so we skip past the start of turn phase because there's nothing to do. We skip past the command sub phase um, because we are not casting any invocations or attempting to invocate no heck as it stands. Mm -hmm. um, and we go into the conjuration phase and we are conjuring something. I am conjuring Van Hal's Dance Macabre. Amazing. Very good. And who's, who's conjuring? I have the, my level four Wizzy. Yes. He's going to conjure Necromancer Master. And he's going to do it on the Barrow Whites. Very good. <laughs> yes, the, the, the Grave Guards. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was something. Indeed, yeah. indeed. Um, all right, sir, what do you need to cast it? Well, I need to get an 8 or a 12. An 8 I, or an 12. An 8 gives me 1d3 to either movement, weapon, skill, or initiative. Yep. But if I get 12 plus, it's two of those. Ah, d3 to two of those. Yes. All right, fabulous, sir. Van Hill's Dance Macabre Let's targeting see if I do it. the Whites. So I got plus four to this row. It is a nine. Mm, yes, five plus four is a nine. Um, now I am out of range with uh, my two wizards to be able to wizardly dispel this. Um, and we discussed, I don't think there's going to be much more magic because of ranges at this stage. So I am going to attempt a fated dispel. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, the fates are going to intervene on the, the, the Grudgebringer company's behalf. So I need to see a 10 on these two D6s because you have to beat the casting roll and I don't get to I add anything to, to this. Oh, we're going to see a 10, Matty B. There's not a 10. <laughs> we're going to see a 10. Ah, a 6. That no. is a better C. That is a <laughs> 6. Very good. So the Van Hills Dance Macabre does come off, sir. Yes. I'm um, just on the. My... Yes. Uh, and what are you going to what are you going to choose? A movement. Movement. So yes. D3 to their movement, sir. Ah, for an extra <laughs> one. <laughs> very sad. Oh, that's very sad. Very sad. So they will go to movement five for yes. the turn. Um, so we do go on to the movement phase and we have uh, declare charges. You do have some dogs behind this this fortified vampiric yes. manor. But we did the maths and it looks like I need like maximum. It's long bomb. Yeah, <laughs> yeah very much the maximum. So I probably won't be declaring charges. That's very fair, sir. So yes. no charges? No charges. No charges. All right. We don't have any compulsory moves. So that brings us to remaining moves. So, this is where everything is now. And this is where everything ends up. And we have actually gone all the way to the end of the shooting phase because we had some reserve moves to do. The, the knights, the ghouls, and the dogs that did a reserve move at the end of the shooting phase um, because we didn't actually have any magic to cast in the shooting phase. So this is where everything's ended up. All right, Matty B, give us your wrap up, mate. Well, I moved these little wolves a little bit inwards to show their rear end to go kind of like, charge me, bitch. <laughs> um, I can't say that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> show, show the rear end to say, charge me, you know, come at me, bro. And then I've got a little bit of movement with these guys at the back just to back them up for a charge, yes. possibly a counter charge, as you will. Mm, perhaps. Uh, perhaps if they attempt that, they might just shoot my dogs. Indeed. Um, and then over here, we've moved my two units of crypt ghasts. Ghouls. Ghouls, sorry. Crypt ghouls, these ways. Yes. So they're kind of doing a forky maneuver mm. and my knights are out ahead charging. Yes, very good. Not, not actually charging. Yes, indeed. The zombies and the graveguard have pushed and shuffled up the center and the uh, fell bats have flown over the building to the other side. Staying yep. back, keeping cagey, but getting prepared for, for turn two shenanigans. Um, and so... That's it. That's the end of the shooting phase. You know, there is no combat phase and no assailment spells to cast. So that's it. The, uh, the vampire counts have swarmed forward. That is it. That is the end of vampire counts. Turn one. Empire of man, turn one. Uh, strategy phase, got nothing for start of turn, nothing for command phase, um, and but we do have something for the conjuration. I am going to attempt to conjure a hex and it will be the curse of arrow attraction. Yes, um, which is cast on a seven plus and I'm gonna attempt to put it on those bats right there. I dislike. Indeed. So, and that is coming from uh, from Luther Flamestrike, the the battle magic wizard, the bright wizard in this timeline. I'm um, needing a seven plus two d six plus four for his wizard level. Oh boy, that looks like a nine plus four. 
is a 13, sir. Well, I can't beat that. Indeed. So, <laughs> <laughs> so he does, because his wizard is more than 24 inches away, he could attempt a Faded Dispel, but Faded Dispels can't get the, the perfect Dispel, or and they also can't be outclassed in the art. So essentially there's no, no Irresistible Dispel and no, um, no miscast on the Dispel for a Fated Dispel, because because there's nobody that's actually attempting it. So it does go off. The Curse of Arrow Attraction will go <laughs> onto those, uh, those poor, poor bats. I'll put a little pip on them. There we go. A little pip to remind me. I've got one of them there and one of them here. So I can keep, keep the table nice and clean while also remembering things. Huzzah! Huzzah! Because <laughs> we're all. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that's my, my conjuration phase done. I don't think I've got anything else to conjure. No, nothing else to cast in the conjuration phase. Um, and there's no fleeing troops to rally. So we go on to the movement phase and that would start with declare charges. Um, Maddie B, can you tell me how far away my, uh, my small unit of knights is from those dogs? What kind of charge am I the looking at one? there? Yeah, please. All right, so going straight ahead, it's like a 10 and wheeling from the outside edge, it's like a 12. So, you know, with a small wheel, it's somewhere like an 11 to a 12. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give that a crack. I'm going to declare a charge with, uh, with Sven Carlson's house cavalry into the flank of those dogs. I'm taking the bait, mate. I'm taking the, the yummy, dog yummy bait. bait. <laughs> um, and I am going to charge them because I reckon I can probably destroy them and then just reform and then cop the charge from your reserves. That's, that's what I'm hoping anyway. That's how I'm seeing it play out. Um, so because you are undead, you can only hold, um, and yes. that's my only charge. So let's let's roll it out and let's have a crack. I have uh, movement seven, and then I roll my two d six, picking the highest. So seven plus whoa, ooh, six already is getting me a eleven. Uh, no, that's, no, 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 it's, it's a thirteen. 13 yeah. That's a thirteen, and then I will add a swift stride die to that. Wow. Very good. So that's giving me a 17 inch charge. I think you made it. Um, I reckon I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll get those moved in. And that is where the Sven Carlson's house cavalry end up slamming into the flank of the, the dire wolves. Now they didn't need to make a leadership check because of their the fear rule because they were not outnumbered by the dire wolves. So just remember, fear only comes into account now if the unit you are attempting to attack or the fear causing unit outnumbers you. So they were they were brave enough to smash into the flank of the dire wolves. Um, excellent, that's the charges done. We have no compulsories, so we would just go on to remaining moves. So this is where everything is now. And this is where everything ends up. All right, my army has done a bit of moving and grooving. So uh, Eusebio the Bleak has led his flagellants rushing forward, you know, whinging and complaining, being like, oh, I can't believe we're here. It's so bleak. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, while Morgan Bernhardt and the Grudgebringer Infantry, led by Shepke, have all, you know, roused themselves, being like, Men of the Empire, forward! <laughs> and then, uh, enemy sighted! <laughs> um, and have moved up into flanking and pushing positions, both of my wizards moving up as well, staying outside of 24 inches of his uh, main wizard man, um, so that I can maybe get some spells off this range, this range, this turn. Um, and that's it! That's it! It's, uh, it's magic phase. Well, no, it's not. We don't have magic phase anymore. It's shooting phase. And we've got magic to do, in it? Yeah. <laughs> Shooty magic. Exactly. So um, I am going to start with uh, Morgan Bernhardt himself. He is going to point his grudge bringer sword and let off a fireball into these filthy bats. Those disgusting bats. So this is super cool. This is a bound item, um, which means it is just going to be 2d6 plus two to this roll, needing an eight. Yeah. Oh mate, and I get a 10, um, which in fact becomes can a 12. Can I counter a bound item? I beg your pardon? Can I counter a bound item? Of course you can. Are you within 24 inches of Morgan Bernhardt? I believe so. Oh crap, you are. <laughs> Damn. Ah, so would you like to attempt a dispel of that, sir? Yes, I will. You need to beat a 12, so you need to see a 13. So 2d6 plus 4, needing a 13. 7 plus 4 is 11. 11. 11 no, period. unable to hold back the power of the Grudge Bringer Sword. All right, that is going to be 2d6 strength 4 hits onto those fell bats. How many of them? Here. Ah, for five, not the best, but that'll do. 
Strength four hits, the fireball swings out, boom, hitting the bats. Uh, wounding on three, strength four to toughness three. Burn them. Ah, three, three miss, two wounds go through. Um, and now you would usually have a six up a regen, but because it is a flaming attack, and they are flammable, no regen. So one bat, sir, is burned to dust. You may remove Bernie, Bernie a model. Whoosh, very good. The grudge bring a sword, it did a thing, yes. God, that's cool. Well, second verse, same as the first. Um, Luther Flamestrike is going to an unleash a fireball of his own again into those bats. Let's you just get really them burnt. Don't like these bats. I don't like them, mate. Why don't you like me bats? <laughs> I don't like their threatening presence on my <laughs> my lone wizards slash my uh, my great cannons. So I just want them gone. I don't like flyers, and I want them dead. <laughs> so flame ball coming out again, needing an eight, but plus four for his his master mage status. Very good. That, sir, is going to be a 12 again. Um, now this him. one, yes, you are not in range for. So a 12, you could, you can't actually dispel no. it. No, not even with your fated dispel, sir. Actually, does, can you, can a fated dispel get a, an irresistible? I need to check, I need to make sure. All right, so as it turns out, a natural roll of double six is always an unbinding, regardless of what kind of dispel you're attempting, whether it be wizardly or fated. Um, a double one on a fated dispel doesn't create an outclassed in the art or anything like that, um, but you can get the unbinding. So Maddie B could have attempted to unbind the, um, uh, what is that, the, the Curse of Arrow attraction. Um, we're not going to worry about that one, and we're just going to attempt it on the fireball. Yep. Fantastic. All right, Maddie B, using your, your fated dispel, because there isn't any other magic coming nope. out this turn, so now's the time. Looking for the double six. No. Nope. Very good, but we figured out something. That's good yeah. to know. You can still go for that double six on the fated dispel. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So, look, the, the fireball is coming out yet again. <laughs> So, you know, Luther Flamestrike conjures the fireball, sending it out with a word of power, and it is doing two... Oh! 12 strength four hits? Oh, boy! Jeez. Yeah, I don't have any bats anymore. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy! 12 strength four hits, toughness three. We need to see four three-ups here. And in a puff of smoke... Oh, wow! Ah, uh, one, two... Three, four, five. There is yeah. enough, but holy crap. Yeah, that was a bit of a scandal. That was a, that was a, a terrible roll. Less than half, but lovely. They are poofed into dust, into smoke, and they melt and crumble. There's now a little burning pile of charred bat wings. And right there, that's pretty great. Heck yeah. No need for that Curse of Arrow attraction in the end. Yeah. <laughs> But lovely, we, we got rid of the flyers with a couple of fireballs. Heck yeah, magic, look at that. Magic. Magic, it's magic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's continue with the shooting phase. My um, grudge bringer crossbowmen on the hill are going to fire down at the second unit of dire wolves that are, yes, in reserve. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Stop that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I looked at it earlier. Only eight, uh, sorry, ten of the eighteen are in range. So it is going to be ten shots. One of them is the marksman, uh, Mr. Corporal Fletcher. Corporal <laughs> Fletcher has plus one ballistic skills, so instead of needing fives to hit for long range, he needs fours. Ah, Corporal Fletcher misses. Um, and the rest of the grudge bring a crossbowman needing fives to hit for range, yeah. Ah, getting a single hit. <laughs> Not a great volley there, boys. Strength four to toughness three dog, killing a dire wolf on a three. Very good. One die roll. Oh, very good, yes! <laughs> I forgot, yes, a six up regeneration roll. Ah, ah it. no, it is unable to regenerate from its from its filthy undeath visage. <laughs> and one dog, one dire wolf is put down with the volley of crossbows. <laughs> Out they go, very nice. Um, all right, let's continue. Um, we're gonna come down to Keeler's Bowman, Keeler's War Bowman. Uh, Johan Kieler, and they are all going to shoot at the knights. See if I can somehow plink a black knight out of that unit. There are 11 men in that unit, and one of them is Johan Kieler himself, the marksman. Now you are again at long range, so we are going to need fours to hit with the marksman. Ah yes, Johan Kieler, the dead eye, gets <laughs> a hit. Um, and then the remaining 10 bows hitting on fives. Oh yes, the longbowmen get a few more hits. We get four in total from the 11 shots. We are strength three longbows, I'm sorry, not longbows, just war bows, to toughness four black knights. We need fives to find a wound in their tough, tough white exterior. 
Ah, no wounds. Oh, Unlucky. Yeah. I just needed to force an armor save. I was all save. ready for my regens. Well, yeah, well, yeah. You would have gotten armor saves before those regens, <laughs> oh, yeah, mate. True, true, true. <laughs> um, those are thick boys. Thick so, boy. no, the, the volley comes out and they stick into, you know, skeletal steeds and into the legs of knights, but not enough to... to to disincorporate their corporeal forms. <laughs> um, all right, that's all of my conventional shooting. That does leave me with some cannons. All right, the cannon in the woods is lining up to get a shot through the grave guard and then through three of these ghouls. That's the line that we're picking. Um, and I have decided to put my initial shot right here, which is 10 inches from the back of this guy, like right there. So if I roll the 10, I'm landing on him and then hopefully going through. If I roll real low a couple of times, I'm not gonna make it to the unit. So they pack the cannonball and then they, they shoot it out, you know, angling it up. And then the extra bit of, uh, of gunpowder clangs out and boom, six inches forward from that point is going to pop it right here. Very good. So then I'll need a one. At least the, the two won't make it, but the four will. If I roll a two, I don't think I hit him. Ha! A two? No! Oh no. <laughs> God damn it. Really? I'm going to have to quickly measure this yeah, up measure. and make sure that those angles were right, but that's not great. All right, so their bases are just over two inches from corner to corner, um, which means that if I was going 10 inches from the back, to that corner, the eight just makes it. Ah, uh, <laughs> lucky me, I Ooh. just hit a bazaar. So a single strength 10 cannonball hits one black knight, uh, wounding him on a two. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Knock his helmet off. <laughs> oh, oh, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> nice. nice. He yeah, just lost momentum and just bonked. Yeah. You know, kicked away by one of the things. <laughs> it hit like a massive rock right yeah, there. Yeah, right and there. Just, yeah. And off it goes. Amazing. That's great. Yeah. great. Um, all right. Well, great cannon number two will hopefully have a better showing. Yes. And it is lining up the grave guard in such a way that it will go through all of the ranks. Hopefully hitting the standard bearer and then going do, 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 out to the back corner. I've measured six inches back from the front of the unit, hoping to cook, put myself into some good odds. So again, from the from there, they're loading the cannon, seeing the dead starting to surge forward, thinking of the poor maiden, <laughs> Countess Isabella von Lieberhuis, in there, and they fire their cannon. Boom! Eight inches forward. We were six inches away from the front of the unit. Can you measure me up? Eight mm -hmm. inches from there, Matty B. All right, it has sailed over the front of the unit, hitting this gentleman in the third rank, um, near the back, currently landing right on top of him. Does it bounce through him? It does, another 10 inches out <laughs> of the back. So it's going to hit a total of three men, because yep. it's going through three ranks, wounding on twos. Very good, that is all three, sir. Um, I'm not sure what the AP of a cannon is. I'm just gonna check. All right, so it is AP2, Armor Bane 2. I unfortunately did not roll any sixes, so no Armor Bane. So it's gonna be AP2 to their four up armor save for heavy armor and shield, which will give them three six up armor saves, sir. Oh, one. you save one. Very nice. The clinks off the armor of one of them. Um, and then two five up regens for the Drakenhof banner. Ah, oh, and you regen another one. Very nice, sir. So a single grave guard gets smashed to bone meal from the cannon. Love that. Oh, it's a thick unit. He's a thick boy. You know, back in the day, that would just be three dead yeah, dudes because totally. no armor saves to no. cannons. Yeah. No, no regen on those boys. But look at this. Armor AP causing, you know, effect in the game and the Drakenhof banner. Very cool. That is it. That's the shooting phase done. We do have our first combat phase cracking over here on Empire Turn 1 with Sven Carlsen's house guard charging for the Empire slash for the Border Princes. <laughs> <laughs> for Sven Carlsen! As they slam into the flank of those dire wolves. All right, let's make this happen. Yep. We have six knights, six of Sven Carlsen's house guard, and one of them is a champ, so seven attacks in total. Weapon skill four to weapon skill three, hitting on threes. Oh wow, they've got everything. perfect dice. They've lowered their lances and come slamming into them. They are strength five on the charge to toughness three, um, filthy slavering undead beasts. We're killing them on twos. And we wipe the unit. <laughs> we wipe the unit well, on the charge. 
five oh, regens. Oh, I'm sorry, you do indeed. Ooh. One, two, three, four, five, six regens, six my regen. friend. Six regeneration rolls. I got two. Two of them? Yeah. So four die? Yeah. Oh, mate, you've left one alive, you son of a gun. I think it's going to be the Doom Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Does make sense. Um, so, yes, the Doom Wolf lives, and then I will get six war horses will attempt to trample the Doom Wolf on the charge. So, again, these are weapon skill three horses to weapon skill three Doom Wolf hitting on fours. Oh, very good. We do get three wounds there. Oh, sorry, three hits there. And with their flailing hooves on the charge, we need fours to wound. Strength three to toughness three. Fours. Oh, wow. That's good. All of them, mate. Three six-up regens. You need a triple six. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Matty B. I'm in shock. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> You just regenerated them all, you filthy dog. I can't believe it. That's hilarious. Amazing. Yeah. What a great game. Oh, wow. Well, wow. <laughs> Already a corker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, Matty B, you get to swing back with your Doom Wolf, mate. So two attacks back. Nice. They are weapon skill three. Indeed. Hitting on fours, mate. Ah, two? two hits. Oh, my God. Strength three to toughness three. So wounding on fours. Oh, he's got a wound through. Um, we have heavy armor, shield, and barded war horses, which gives us a three up armor save. Don't you kill a knight. I Don't you dare, Matty B! No! Oh, no! <laughs> no. This Doom Wolf is angry. Uh, one of Sven Carlson's <laughs> house knights does fall. Yes, pull him out. Oh, from the Doom Wolf, it just, you know, takes a bunch of swinging hooves, gets trampled, <laughs> pulls itself back up in its death throes, and just ah, tears the throat out of a knight. Amazing. That was super awesome. How dare you? I can't believe you killed one of my knights from that. I can't believe they're all three sixes. I know. <laughs> I'm still back on that. <laughs> Ridiculous, mate. Right? All right, let's do um, let's do the combat res. So, I got four kills in total. Um, you regenerated two from the first run bunch, and you regenerated three from the second bunch because they all they all go to uh, combat res. The yeah. regen runs. Um, I did get a flank charge. I have a banner, and I am a closed order unit. You kill the knight. Yeah. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> that knight should have lived. Um, but with all of this combat res, you will crumble to dust, my yep. friend. From the crumble, off crumble. they go. A delicious crumble. <laughs> delicious crumble. <laughs> all right, and with destroying the dogs in a single round um, before the break test subphase, um, I now get to attempt to restrain and reform or I may overrun. And I'm definitely not going to overrun, so I'm either staying there or I am reforming. So uh, Leadership 9 from Morgan. So from Captain Morgan Bernhardt himself. <laughs> uh, needing a Leadership 9. We're all good, so we will reform. And there they are, ready to face the slavering charge of the filthy hounds. Heck yeah, that went pretty well. Um, not as well as it should have gone. I lost the knight. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, that, that doom region. Wolf did not like you. Man, it did not want to go down. It was not having it needed flesh before it <laughs> before it succumbed to the afterlife. Amazing. That was awesome. Um, but that's it. That is it. We've had our first combat phase and it was glorious. <laughs> but that is the end of Empire. Turn one. Vampire counts turn two. Strategy phase, nothing to do in the, uh, I don't know, the, the first one, the start of turn phase. Um, and then we go on to the command phase, sir. And yep. so we've got some invocations of Nehek to do. Yes. So I'm going to, first I'm going to try and Nehek my way back to a full squad of wolves. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so it's going to be a leadership test for your yep. necromancer, which is your master necromancer, I think, is leadership eight. Yeah, I believe so. Leadership is eight. Fantastic. Needing to roll eight or under. That He's works. all good. Very good. And so you can just bring that, that single dog back. Very good. The, the dire wolf just returns. Mm. And then Vampire will do the same thing with his little group to Fantastic. get that one guy back. Also leadership eight for the Vampire. Yes. Indeed. So he can just return that one grave guard back. Ah, oh, my shooting. <laughs> my shooting has done nothing. <laughs> oh, it hurts. <laughs> Very um, good, sir. And that's that. Yes, and that is that because nothing else got wounded. Nope. Damn you, knights. <laughs> 
Um, cool. So then that brings us to the conjuration phase. You got some uh, Enchant some enchantments to cast. Yes. What I might cast is uh, the dance macabre again. Yes, Van Hell's dance macabre. But this time I'm doing it on my zombies. Ooh, get the zombies out of the dodge. I'm going to get them moving out there. Very nice. All right, mate. Um, what do you need to cast it? All right, needing the eight or twelve, depending on uh, what level you get. Yeah. All right, two d six plus four, mate, because it's coming from the master necromancer. Ooh, eleven plus four. Now, I think boy. I got my twelve. <laughs> um, do I want to put a fated dispel on this? Potentially, I'm going to just try it. Give me the twelve. Give me the double six. Do it. No, I get a seven. Very good. The Ooh. Van Hell's dance shall be yours, sir. So what the zombies now have is going to be a D3 to movement and a D3 to initiative. Very nice. No, right. weapon skill. Yeah, okay, weapon skill and and movement. movement. Very yeah. good, mate. All right, roll it up. What is the D3? So movement first. Nah, it's, it's just the one roll. Oh, just the one roll? Yep, so it's okay. one to both, unfortunately. One to both. <laughs> Unfortunate, yes. yes. Fabulous. Nothing else to do for the conjuration phase. So that moves us on to movement phase and declare charges. Do you have any, Matty B? Yes. Fabulous. Charging. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Unexpected! Oh, I can't believe it! <laughs> um, um, any other charges? So I'm charging my knights towards these little flag gillants. Indeed, the flaggies. And then my wolf, of course, to these guys. Fantastic. Well, both units will hold. Um, which one do you want to roll up first? I'm going to try the knights first. All right, that is a 17-inch charge. They've got a 7-inch movement, so we need to see a 10 on the dice here, mate. So 2d6 to start off oh. with. Ah. <laughs> and then you can roll. <laughs> and then you can roll your swift stride. You can if you want to. Six. All right. So you're going the six inches forward. Um, I'll just mark them with a six. Very good. And then your dogs, mate. I don't know what that is for a charge. It's probably not far. It's like, no. I think they're guaranteed to go in because you've got nine inch base movement. Yeah, right. So much but roll it just roll for posteridory. Yeah. Posteridory. I I made it. <laughs> yeah, they've definitely made it. I should have rolled the other way around. Indeed. That <laughs> Um, all right, we'll get these boys moved as well. And that is where the knights end up failing forward six inches. Um, all right, and the dogs have made their glorious slavering charge into Sven Carlson's house knights. Oh boy, that might be bad for me. I've just got to rely on my three up armor save. <laughs> Hasn't the worked out good so gives far. Some additional something, doesn't it? Yeah, plus one strength. Yeah. Um, but all right, that's the end of the charge phase. Yep. Um, there is no compulsory, so we go on to remaining moves this is where everything is now and this is where everything ends up all right matty b give us your movement phase wrap up please sir all right so in movement i cast spectral steed on my level four magic user which gives him fly 10 and ethereal very good he's flying straight over to be with these zombies and get in range of casting some spells the spicy dog <laughs> um on top of that pretty much i've just pushed forward Yep, exactly. The skeletons swept around the, the graveyard. Both of these units of uh, ghouls pushed further out of the graveyards as well. Yep. Zombies move forward and the, uh, the, the grave guard, you know, wheeled their way around a bit. And we saw these guys fail their charge. So sad. <laughs> oh, sure. Sure, sure. Um, so that does bring us to the shooting phase, Matty B. Um, and we have a magic missile that we want to attempt. Yes, I'm going to attempt using the unquiet spirits. Very nice. It is a cast value of 8 plus, and I have measured that I can reach this unit of knights over here. Indeed, my grudge bringer heavy cavalry. Needing a uh, 8. Well, you've rolled pretty decent, mate. So you've eight, gotten 12. A, an 8 12. I will attempt to oppose you with Luther Flame Strike, because we are in range to oppose each other's magic now. Um, so I need to see plus one to that on the dice because i'm also a level four so i need to roll a nine where you've rolled an eight come on baby come on luther hold back the dark necromantic magic oh my god oh, yes unrelenting force yes an unbinding yeah. <laughs> amazing i, I did have it. been unbound yes irresistible unbinding <laughs> that was gross <laughs> Hooray, that was great, because that was going to do 3d6 strength 2 attacks with no armor saves allowed. Which, yeah, you that know, would have been bad. Yeah, it would have been bad. Would have been, yeah. would have been bad. Ones, yeah, would yeah. have been wounding on sixes, but <laughs> every one of those sixes was a dead knight. So, whoo, that was, that was spicy. 
Um, all right, that's the magic. Uh, that's the shooties. The, the shooty done. So at the end of the shooting phase, you can now do your reserve moves, mate. Um, so this is where the reserve move guys are now, and this is where the ghouls ended up. So just these ghouls did their their um, reserve move forward. These ones didn't want to get any closer because they were going to start potentially giving me a charge range, um, and they didn't want to do that. And that's fair enough. <laughs> um, so that brings us to the end of the shooting phase so we would go on to another combat phase and here we are with the fight between the Sven Carlson's house guard and the slavering charge of the dire wolves dire wolves have moved at least three inches over their charge so they get plus three to their initiative so they're swinging out at initiative six to my initiative three they're definitely going first all right six attacks because there is a doom wolf in the pack hitting on fours Ooh, spicy Three? Yeah, three hits. Very nice, sir. They are strength four on the charge because they have the slavering charge special rule. So wounding on threes here, Matty B. I've got two. Two. Two wounds have come through. No AP, so we will just get our three up heavy armor, shield, and barding saves. Let's make some saves here, knights. Raise your shields! Oh! A knight does go down. Boom! Now on the charge, they slaver and bush. Put him down. Um, very good. All right, well, I'm going to throw attacks back, sir. Got four guys left, and one of them is the champ. So five attacks in total. One into the Doom Wolf, and four into the unit. I'll do the Doom Wolf first. We're going to hit the Doom Wolf on a four. Oh, sorry, on a three, because we're weapon skill four. We do hit him. Um, and we are just regular strength three boys now, so killing him on a four. No, I failed to kill the Doom Wolf. There's no killing, remember, I have regens. It doesn't matter, I didn't, I didn't kill him. Oh. <laughs> I didn't wound him. <laughs> but yes, you're right, regens is a thing. Uh, four other attacks into the, uh, into the regular boys, hitting on threes. Oh, three hits, three hits. And then wounding, because they will have regen. <laughs> wounding on fours. A uh, single wound comes through, mate. You'll have a six up regen. Oh, you and your, oh, God, this is not a good faction for you, Matty B. <laughs> you roll clutch sixes, apparently. I think it's your red dice. Uh, mate, I'm taking those off. <laughs> um, all right, and then it's just going to be four horses. Um, four horses swinging back, needing fours to hit. Oh, the horses are angry. Everyone knows <laughs> it's the horses that do the business. Wounding on fours. Yeah, indeed. Two wounds from the horses' hooves, mate. Two six upper regens. Oh, you one. make another one, Rickard. <laughs> um, all right, one wolf is felled. Um, so I am going to be ending up winning this, but let's have a look. See, so we'll do you first. You got a wound. I killed one dog and then did two wounds that were regenerated. I have a banner, and I am at closed order. So I do win by four, Maddie B. The unit crumbles by yeah. four. They crumble oh, away. Crumbly wolves. Crumbly wolves. Boom. And off they go. Um, that will allow me to attempt to restrain and reform again on leadership nine. And I do. Very good. We will reform the cavalry in this direction. Very nice. Excellent. Another fight. They're, these guys are like just absolutely coated in direwolf blood and fur <laughs> at this point. Good work, boys. And that is the end of the combat phase and the end of Vampire Counts, turn two. Empire of Man, turn two, strategy phase. No start of, so we're going, we're going straight to the conjuration phase because I've got nothing to do in those first two phases. <laughs> um, so we are going to conjure some, uh, some magic. So I'm gonna start with uh, Alor, my, my elementalist, my jade wizard, he's going to uh, cast um, earthen ramparts on the flagellants here to give them a five up ward save and have them essentially trying to like pull the earth up into, you know, a little obstacle in front of them, put them behind cover. So earthen ramparts needs a 10 plus and he is a level two getting plus two to the dice. So hurrah! Now uh, five, six, seven. No luck. He does not get it off. Ah, Alor. He is not not able to conjure the winds. Um, and then I am going to put a hex. I'm going to do the curse of arrow attraction on these knights right here um, from from Luther Flame Strike. And the curse of arrow attraction needs a seven plus. Hua. 
And I do get it with a six, sir, which goes up to a 10. Now you are in range to dispel with your level four master necromancer. So you will need to see a seven on the dice to dispel, sir. Done. Damn it. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> so a curse of arrow attraction will be put on those boys. Sweet, that's my conjuration phase. Um, and then we would go to movement phase, declare charges. And I don't have any, um, uh, there's no point. I've got a 10 inch charge there. No, thank you. <laughs> and all I'm doing is exposing my flank tonight. So no thanks, B. And everything else is just gonna, it's probably just gonna chill. I don't think I actually even have any movement to be honest. Nah, nah, I don't wanna do any conveyance spells. I'm just gonna sit pretty. I'm liking my position here at the moment. You can come in a little bit closer before I close the jaws of this trap. <laughs> and I do have the shooting superiority, so I'm gonna use it. Um, so no movement phase, just skipping straight past it. No conveyance magic. So we're going straight into the shooting phase. I'm gonna start with this cannon. <laughs> And this cannon is gonna try and basically, so, so his little wizard back here is no longer within three inches of any unit, which does mean that he can be hit by an incidental cannonball. So as long as he's within three inches and not the closest target um, of you know, another unit of at least unit strength five, he can't even be hit by you know, a, the bouncing line of a, of, a, of a cannonball. This was cleared up in one of the question and answers. However, if he's not within three, he's been left there by himself. If a, if a cannonball happens to errantly bounce through him, he can get murked by it. So I'm gonna give it a try. <laughs> I'm gonna murk him. Um, but basically I'm just gonna aim for 10 inches from the back of this guy's unit on a line that if I roll a 10, so if I roll, a perfect 10 onto the back of him, and then a perfect 10 again. <laughs> <laughs> I can potentially get both of them. Um, it's super unlucky, but hell, you gotta try. <laughs> so 10 inches from the back of this unit with uh, with this cannon in the woods, starting out. Give me the 10, do it, ha! Kaboom. An eight, ah, so two inches from the front, or like, oh no, because a 10 from the back, Means a rerun on his head. It's, yeah, it lands like basically right on him because his base is slightly longer than two inches. So it's hit him so far and we'll be going an extra misfire. So in which case it just embeds straight into him. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. We do hit him. Can we wound him? This is the second time that exact model is going to have been <laughs> hit with a great cannon cannonball. Wounding on a two. Ha! yeah, get him this time, mate. And that is an armor bane. So negative four to your armor save. So no armor save. So that'll just give you your six up ward save. Sorry, your six up regen. regen. Can you regenerate it? Oh, oh close. you skeevy dog. <laughs> I would not have handled you doing that again. <laughs> a single knight does fall to a puff of smoke and a cannonball. There you are, my friend. I'll resurrect him. Well, love that. Well, we'll see. <laughs> I just need to kill one more and then you'll at least be at a de deficit. Oh, that's true. Yes, and so in, in saying that, let's make that happen. We're gonna use Keeler's Bowman to just volley into them. All right, no one is within half range. If that guy had been left there, three of them would have been. Should have shot them first, but such is life, <laughs> <laughs> such is life. So they are all at over half range. Johan Keeler, the marksman, will shoot first, needing a four to hit. Yes, Johan, very nice. And then the rest of Keeler's Bowman needing fives. Oh yeah, getting four in total. I think that was pretty statistical. We need fives to wound. Not a single wound. Oh, we yeah. just can't wound them. That's exactly what happened last turn. Yeah. Boo. Boo hiss. <laughs> Boo hiss. I just needed one of them. Gosh, damn it. Fletcher's crossbowmen are all out of range, so I are unable to shoot. Um, I'm going to throw out some, some fireballs. So Morgan Bernhardt is going to, to level the grudge bringer sword and he's going to attempt to cast a fireball from it into the graveguard. So he needs an eight. He's getting plus two from the ring. Yeah. Um, he gets a five, six, seven. A fail, a fail to cast. Lame, oh, the magic's not happening. Um, and then uh, Luther Flamestrike will attempt the same. Again, needing an eight, but getting a plus four to the roll this time. That is a six, sir. Uh, plus four is a 10. ten. So you need to beat my six with your, with your master necromancer. Got and it. you do. Oh, oh you resisted oh, it. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Very good. Yes, <laughs> he gets a uh, an unbinding. <laughs> You're now naked. Wow. <laughs> oh, my naked little bed. <laughs> Brutal. Oh, man, I'm not getting the shooting phase that I need. Um, all right. Well, there's just a cannon left, so... Let's do it. So we're basically just going to be drawing a line so that I'm going to be hitting through this back corner, whatever line that happens to be. Yep. So I'll do six inches from the front of the unit again. All right, so six inches from the front is roughly about there. Now, just to confirm whether it lands here and bounces through, he cannot be hit by this this um, this ball because he is within three inches of a friendly unit. That is unit strength five or more. So he essentially just is able to dodge out of the way of it because he can't actually be a target of this kind of shooting attack right now. So here we go. We need um, a six. A six would be perfect because it will land perfectly on the front of the unit. Oh, misfire! Oh no! Misfire! Oh no! Oh no! Kaboom. Oh, that's not good. We're going to have to get the chat. <laughs> and here we are at the black powder misfire table for the first time in the old world. <laughs> Fabulous. So we know we we don't want a one. Two to four is not great. Five and six is the best option. Need to see a five or six. What do we get? Ah, oh, a, a four. Damn. So a malfunction. The charge misfires, terminally inconveniencing one of the crew. <laughs> <laughs> it's very inconvenient. Very, he's going to die from it. That's oh, yeah. how inconvenient it's it is. It's very inconvenient. <laughs> um, and knocking the war machine over. It can be righted, but it will take time. Dang, the crew immediately lose one wound. The model fails to shoot this turn and, the, and cannot shoot before the end of the next turn. So no shooting for two turns and one crewman dead. <laughs> or Turned very inconvenient. So inconvenient. <laughs> Bugger. <laughs> And this poor gentleman is the terminally inconvenienced man. He attempted to plunge at the wrong time. You know, the ball got stuck and he was told, yeah, you must plunge it, plunge it now. And unfortunately, ah, boom, boom, off he went. ka ah, Poor man. Inconvenienced for him. <laughs> But that is it. Not, not a very successful turn all in all. That is it. That is the end of Empire. Turn two. Vampire Counts, turn three. Now, something uh, worth mentioning is while I was looking at the stat line of these guys, because they're likely maybe going to be getting into a fight this turn, I saw that they were impetuous. Ah, so mm. technically, because these guys moved within 10 inches of them, that is their maximum charge range. So on a 50-50, they should have declared a charge at the start of uh, Temp Empire turn two. Um, yeah, we're gonna we're not gonna retcon all the way back nope. to the start of it and see if they did. We're just gonna assume. Technically, a 50 with the roll. Yeah, exactly. We we actually did a roll off. We did a 50 50 <laughs> being like, are we gonna retcon it or not? Um, and we rolled and we're like, okay, we're not yeah, going to. Don't worry about it. Um, so they essentially they have passed their impetuous <laughs> test and did not need to do Fate that charge. Now. Indeed, yeah. huzzah. <laughs> but worth noting, you know, impetuous is a thing and they have to declare charges or there's a, they have to test to see if they can not declare charges once people are in charge range. Going into vampire turn, um, we are in the strategy phase and going straight to the command phase. Mm -hmm. So we are, we're trying to invoke Nehek yes. yet again. What Nehek? I'm uh, doing some <laughs> Nehek over there. Very good, so yes, the uh, the necromantic acolyte is going to attempt to bring back that that smashed by a cannonball black knight. So he's got a leadership seven, Matty B. So it's we, a little bit smaller. Indeed, we need to see a seven or under on these two d six. Oh, damn you! <laughs> damn you! That is a six. So yes, he, he invokes Nehek, and boom, the black knight is back, raised from the dead. That's pretty sweet. Um, no one else is wounded, so there's no more Nehex to be invoked. That would then bring us to the Conjuration subface, sir, and you're going to uh, do some conjuring? I am. I am going to give the Dance Macabre to my ghouls. Very good, yes, Van coming Van from the Dance Master Macabre. Necromancer, putting the Van Hills Dance Macabre. Macabre, Macabre, Macabre whatever. Well, whatever. Um, on the ghouls, mate, all mm -hmm. right. What so do you need to cast it? Middle my 8 plus, 12 plus is max. Oh, oh, oh my god, that's a double six! Oh, yeah, yeah. Irresistible fall! So much irresistibility. Gnarly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, they've got the macabre, Man, mate, and they've got the big back. one. They've got the big one. What's the big one do? So that just means that I get two that I roll to four, so uh, I get the D3 
three modifier to two of the following rather than one. So weapon skill and movement, no doubt. Yes. That would be yes. what you want, because if they make the charge, or if they're going to make a charge, they're already going to get an initiative <laughs> bonus. So what are they getting? D3, now's the time for... Oh, oh you've gotten one well, every, every time. time. Yeah. <laughs> So plus one movement, plus one yep. weapon skill for them, mate. Yeah. Um, I'll just pop this on them so we remember that yes. they are the target of a dance macabre. Don't fray macabre. Indeed. Lovely. Um, and do you have any other hexes or enchantments that you want to cast? I would like to raise some dead. Oh, yes. Very good. Yes. I'm going to raise the dead here, sir. All right. Needing a 10 plus and getting plus two to the die because he is a level two Give necromancer. Oh, ah, it's a, it's a nine, 10. ten. <laughs> that so works. it goes up to a 12. Do I bother trying a fated dispel double six against this? Nah. Nah, I won't. 2d3 risen zombies. Very good, sir. All right, we'll roll it out. Get your 2d3 risen zombies. You can just have it. Oh, yeah. I got a three and a one. So that will be four, sir. And there they are, four freshly raised zombies from the soil of Sylvania come busting out, you know. <laughs> if you guys weren't able to be, you know, buried in the graveyard and instead- No, they're just there. <laughs> just there. <laughs> out they come, lovely. All right, that ends the conjuration phase, nothing else to cast. Nope. So we go into movement phase and it is declare charges, sir. Do you want to declare any? I am declaring my ghoulers and my knights to charge this little unit. Into here. my flagellants, yes. led by Eusebio the Bleak. <laughs> um, oh, all right, and that's, I don't think there's any other charges to be done. So what would you like to start with, mate? We're doing a simultaneous charge with these yeah. two guys. I'll start with the big guys, the Start horses. with the, the knights. Yeah. Fantastic. Rolling at 2d6 and picking the highest. Get, no, getting a two so far. <laughs> and then adding the swift stride die. Ah, uh, so it's three. Ah, very good. Ending up with a three. So that adds five to your seven, mm -hmm. um, which is a 13. Let's see if that makes it. 13 is in. They are going to make their charge. Fabulous. Um, we'll just remember that they're going to make it. They'll have plenty to do so. All right, mm -hmm. Manny B, let's roll these boys up. Yes. So they have... They're what, 10 inches away. It's a 10 inch charge yep. at the moment. They've got and an they've currently one. got movement six. six. So you need a four plus on one of these two yeah. dice, mate. No! no. <laughs> it's because I'm using the wrong ones. Go away. <laughs> <Matty B. laughs> They're your magic dice, Matty B. They're my magic dice. <laughs> um, so what was the high die? A two. three. Three. A yeah. three, yep. So they're going to fail forward three. Um, and the knights are going to make it in. All right, we'll get that moved in. And that is where the knights end up galloping forward, lowering their lances and slamming into the flagellants and the poor, poor ghouls, even empowered by necromantic <laughs> magic, stumble and trip and fall and <laughs> don't make it to combat. Ah, oh, you stupid ghouls. Got them ghouls. <laughs> Um, cool, that is the charge phase complete. We go on to remaining moves, and of course we will just do a before and after. So, uh, this is where everything is now. And this is where everything ends up. All right, Matty B, give us your wrap up, mate. Okay, well, we've obviously scooched everybody a bit forward, did a bit of a wheel with my uh, zombies to try to get them heading this direction a bit more. Indeed. Uh, then over here, as you can see, I've started marching towards archers and cannons with my newly raised zombies and my other ghouls. Indeed. And my poor little skellies. Oh, just, with the white king. Yeah. They're still just wheeling yeah. their way <laughs> to get relevant and probably never will. No, no. And the necromancer just so. scurrying closer so he doesn't get shot by a cannon. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> Smart boy. <laughs> um, um, and, much. and yes, this necromancer oh, yes. scooched in scooched here. In. Yeah. And the grave guard scooched up yep. as well. That's movement phase done, sir. We go on to the shooting phase, yes. um, and your only shooting is magic. It is. Missiles and vortexes. What would you like to start with, my friend? Can I see him? Yeah, look, I'll say that you can. Yeah, 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 like yeah you corner. can see the grudge bringers. That's fine. Cool, cool. Let's miss all of them. Very good. What is the missile that you are magicking? It is unquiet spirits. Um, all right, sir. So needing an eight plus. Yep. And getting a plus four to the dice. That is a nine. <laughs> that is a nine. Um, so I will try to oppose you with Luther Flame Strike, my my wizard lord. So I just need to beat a five. <laughs> yeah. So I need to see a six on these two dice. Yeah. Hold back the magic. No. No. <laughs> that is a four. <laughs> oh, unbelievable. That's the worst. All mm. right, sir. We were challenging those wills. Oh mate, yes, there's <laughs> the a clash. The duel of wills over there, <laughs> and I. 
fail. I lost <laughs> this one. duel. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, well, crap. All right, mate. Well, roll but it out. 3d6. Let's use the magic dice because it is magic. Oh, very good. 3d6 of them. How many? It looks like 13. Yep. All right. This is 13. Strength 2 hits coming into Toughness 3, Inner Circle Knights. You're just killing knights here on five pluses, mate. Ooh. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, uh, one, two, three... Four. Woo! Not too shabby. Four knights are just, you know, the the unquiet spirits, you know, rake them with with ethereal claws and just <laughs> straight through the armor, take their souls away. Ah, and four knights fall. All right, and that is what is left of the unit after the, the, the spirits rake through them, stealing the souls of four brave Grudgebringer cavalry. Brutal. Oh, <laughs> that was savage. Um, that will be an immediate panic check. Leadership nine. Yeah, double one, the insane bravery. So that's the magic missile done, sir, and I believe you have a vortex that you want to cast as yeah, well. Yeah, let's try that. Let's yeah. Try that. So spiritual vortex. Let's see if we can do this. So, so it's do eleven need? plus. Eleven so a plus. Hard one. Yep. Um, but we'll see what we get. Not going to get eleven plus. No. Nope. No. Does he have any magic missiles or? Not anything? that will reach anything that is an enemy. Fabulous. <laughs> just for some reason, he's just hanging out back here. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. So that's the magic phase done. That means we go on to the glorious. Close combat phase. Doom, doom, doom. Yes, the Black Knights come charging in. Their, their, you know, their old rusted slash patinaed plate clanking and clunking as they come smashing into the front line of the uh, the, the, the flagellants. The flagellants. All right, mate. Let's get this cracking. All right. So weapon skill three to weapon skill three, hitting on fours, seven attacks in total because there is a Hell Knight. Oh, wow! That looks All like hits? That looks like good. <laughs> Matty V! That's better than before. Oh, that's, that's, that was better than before? What was before? <laughs> I don't know anything that I cast. <laughs> I'll try to do. Dear God, that was horrific. All right. <laughs> All right. A perfect spread of four pluses. Disgusting, Matty V. I'm sorry. Um, they are uh, using lances, so strength six on the charge. You're killing on twos here, mate. I got a one. A single one. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. bro. I did that for you. <laughs> wow. Holy crap. So the lances come down and just go slamming into the front line, killing how many to get there? Six. Six of these boys are smashed with lances initially. Oh, biggity boy. That's that's a spicy meatball. <laughs> and then you would have horses Ooh, yes. before I get to go as well. Actually, what's the initiative of a skeletal steed? That is a good question. It is initiative two. Okay, so it still goes up to initiative five on the charge. So the skeletal steeds go first. Um, do you want to allocate one of them into my champion? Because I will have a champion in there. Oh, right. Yeah, I'll do that. Very good. So let's just roll the champion by himself. Getting a hit. Um, and then it's going to be a four to wound. Ah, and you do. You kill Hi. Eusebio the Bleak with a flailing <laughs> hoof. Oh my goodness. That was savage. Oh, I just broke one of them. That's bad. No. Uh, but all right. Um, and so then the remaining five, mate. Yep. The remaining five hitting on fours. Whoa. Very good. You missed a couple. Yeah. And killing on fours. Oh, actually, Eusebio the Bleak gets a... Uh, it's a six up feel no pain against this. Now, oh, yeah. usually they get a six up feel no pain and then a five up feel no pain, which is essentially a ward save against anything non-magical. But these guys have the magical attack special rule. That is right, right? Can you just check that? So as it turns out, black knights don't have magical attacks anymore. So in previous editions, they had white blades, which were considered, you know, magic weapons um, uh, that gave them the killing blow special rule. Now they have the cleaving blow special rule, which means on a roll of six to wound, they, they negate armor saves, no armor save allowed, but they're no longer counted as having magic weapons, which is a bit sad to yeah. be honest. Yeah. Um, but that does mean that I get my ward saves. <laughs> <laughs> it might not be as bad as you thought. I get my feel no pain. So, <laughs> so against, um, against uh, attacks of strength five and above, they get a five up ward save. Anything else is a six up ward save. And because you hit me with gnarly lances on the charge at strength six, those initial six boys that died on the charge will get five up ward saves. How many of them do I save? Feel no pain. Um, Ooh, I saved two of them. You got a couple. Two of them. So two of these boys will go back. 
fabulous. Ooh. Lovely, two of them do go back in, feeling no pain, the, the lance just, you know, slamming into their shoulder, but they care not at all. Um, and then Eusebio the Bleak, because he was killed by a strength three flailing hoof, gets a six up, feel no pain. <laughs> Eusebio? No, no. He, he's so bleak. He's, so like, bleak. he's like, oh, of course, I've been killed by a horse. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you Eusebio. <laughs> oh, um, very good. So now you did have three more hits yep. from the Flailing Hooves into the unit, mate. Wounding on fours. No, no I didn't get no more wounds. No more wounds. Um, nice all right. wrap up. So you still did kill one, two, three, four, five. You killed the whole front rank. So I don't get to fight back, which is pretty disappointing. <laughs> which means their first round with their flails gets wasted. Um, so I just lose combat. And I lose combat by a lot. Um, because you broke my ranks, you killed a bunch. However, we are unbreakable, so yeah. we are just gonna uh, give ground, and, and that will be that. Okay, and there we are, being giving ground two inches back. Now, would you like to follow up or restrain? Follow up. Very good, sir, so you can just move, boom, mm -hmm. to continue in combat. And there they are, remaining in combat with my boys. Ah. <laughs> Very good, they slammed into the front rank of the flagellants, killing five of them and Eusebio, a thunderous charge from the Black Knights. Let's see what we can do in response because they have opened a flank to my, my lovely grudge bringers there. Oh dear. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. But that is it, I guess. Yeah, that is it. That is the end of Vampire Counts. Turn three. Empire of Man, turn three. Let's see if we can get a decent swing back after <laughs> what was a pretty decent turn three for the Vampire Counts. Um, we are skipping, we're in the strategy phase and we're skri skipping straight to the, the conjuration sub-phase. Um, and I am going to attempt to put a hex on, on this, this unit of ghouls for Curse of Arrow Attraction from my, from, from Luther Flame Strike. Um, and this is going to need a 7 plus. Yeah! And I do get it, sir. I get a 9 plus 4, so that's a 13 total. Would you like to try and stop it? Nah. I mean, there's no reason not to, unless you roll a double one, then it's a bad thing. That is a bad thing. But otherwise, you can just dispel as many times as you want, right? Yeah, I know, but the double one scares me. You scared of the double one? <laughs> <laughs> Do you fear yeah, the double, double one? one? I fear it now. You'll be outclassed in the art, mate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what is it, 13? So yeah, you need to beat a 13, so you need a 14. I get a 10 on that. Ah, that works. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Good <laughs> that, is a, that is an unbinding, sir. Very good. You, you stopped my Curse of Arrow attraction. How very dare you. Oh, that was rather lame. <laughs> rather lame of you, sir. <laughs> um, all right. And then I am going to do um, an enchantment. Uh, Alor, my, my Jade Wizard, is going to try and put Earthen Ramparts on this unit again. Um, uh, and he needs a 10 plus. Ha! Ah. And he doesn't get it. Oh, <laughs> he okay. gets a four, which goes That's up right. to a six because he is just a level two. And you're not doing the business, Alloy. You need to get your head in the game, mate. <laughs> you need to get in this game. All right. Well, that is my conjuration phase done. Um, and so we move on to the, uh, the, the, the movement phase and declare charges. And I do have one. I'm going to be declaring a charge from my, my Grudge Bringer Infantry, led by Corporal Shepke, um, oh sorry, Lieutenant Shepke, into the flank of these, of these Black Knights, the blackest of knights. So we aren't outnumbered, so we can, uh, we don't need to do a fear check to make the charge. Um, you do just have to hold. Now, it's going to be a bit of an interesting one. Like, I'm pretty sure I'm in your flank. All right, so yes, they are definitely in the flank where they are, so they are going to, uh, I don't think there's any way they can fail. The no. six is enough, so that gives them 10 inches of wheeling and dealing. Now, while they wheel, the back edge of the unit is going to have to clip through the friendly units to end up here. And while in the middle of a maneuver, which wheeling is, the back edge of your unit is allowed to clip through friendly units. The front can't, but the back can. So, so this should be legal. We're gonna get this in and we'll be back. And this is where the Grudge Bringer company, the Grudge Bringer infantry end up slamming into the flank of the, the Black Knights. So we did end up having to clip through um, the wizard here, but again, that's no problem in this edition. Um, the back corner just clipped through him on the wheel and then boom, we hit and in we go. That's pretty good. 
Um, I'm putting a lot of eggs in this basket. I basically need to crumble this unit this turn, because if I'm still locked here at the end of my turn, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm hoping, I'm hoping with combat rares I can crumble them. <laughs> oh, we'll see. That is the charging phase done. We go on to remaining moves. I'm going to move Alor just over to here. And he is going to attempt a, uh, a, a conveyance spell. <laughs> He's going to attempt to cast Travel the Mystic Pathways. All right, so I have backed Alor up to here to get out of his dispel range. I guess it's um, To attempt to cast Travel the Mystic Pathways on this unit, on my conveyance spell. Um, so that hopefully I can teleport them 12 inches away <laughs> from these filthy ghouls. So let's give it a crack. Travel the Mystic Pathways is a 10 plus. I need an eight on the dice. Come on, Alor, this is your moment. Save your brethren, <laughs> your kinsfolk, do it. Ah, get a 10, amazing, Whoa. yes, amazing. Stated. So that does go up to a 12, sir. You need to see a double C. Fated. The fated, can the you do fated. it? Needing the double six? No, no. very good. So, I, you know, a mystic pathway, like a, a tunnel in the undergrowth, you know, just opens up and they quickly jump into it and they are gonna come back right there. Heck yeah, look at that. They've gone deep into the earth. You know, the, the, the elemental wizard just opens a passage for them and shoom, out they come right there. You know, they just basically step through like a shadow and out they are, 12 inches back, the spell came into effect. Alor, you did it, mate. Yay. If you do nothing else for the rest of the game, good work, mate. <laughs> good work, you spicy little jade wizard, you. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so we will continue with the remaining moves. So uh, this is where everything is now. And this is where everything ends up. Alrighty, I have done a bit of shuffling with my knights, you know, basically just pushing them around, giving myself the biggest opening that I can with the two units. Um, and that's really it. Everything else stayed still. We saw the little bit of movement that happened over here with the conveyance spell. Something I forgot to mention is we forgot to do Matty Bay's um, reserve move with these guys, which is why they were so close to me on my turn. We just quickly did it because the end of the, the shooting phase, we just forgot to move them. So we moved them up. But that's it. That's the movement phase done. We go on to yet another shooting phase. Um, and it's not a great one for me because my, my cannon on the hill can't shoot this turn. I will turn it around though. Matty B, oh, could yes. you turn that boy around? Because they've finally unclogged the other guy's, you know, arm out of the barrel, <laughs> who was terminally uh, inconvenienced. <laughs> We're gonna start with these boys right here and they are going to shoot into the, the skirmishes. So they are going to need, the majority of them are gonna need sevens to hit and the marksman is going to need sixes because they are over half range. The count is moving with the conveyor spell and their skirmish skirmishes so it's a negative three overall so it's going to be a six for the marksman Johan Kula no he misses and then we are going to need sevens for everyone else so we need sixes rolled into four pluses starting with sixes oh one of them is a potential hit and needing a four plus Nah, it was a four for a sec. Very good. You know, it's going through the mystic pathways and then letting out a volley. It all just falls short. Just missing and no luck from Johan's boys. Let's do a cannon. I'm going to do this cannon and I am going to aim it for this, <laughs> this white king on an angle that's just going to go straight back through the ranks essentially. So I'm going straight for him to force a two up lookout, sir. All right, six inches back from the white king. I need to see a six here to land it right on his head. Yeah, a 10, damn, I oh. go over. <laughs> I'm landing right on the back skeleton. Ah, this six inches from the back isn't working out. And then six inches from the front. I think I need to go a little further back. Um, but let's see, I land on one skeleton, turning it into bone meal on a two and I do with a three. Um, oh no, sorry, you'll get a six up ward save oh, against yeah. that. I mean, a, um, a regen. Regen. Gonna regenerate. Ah! <laughs> God regen. damn it, V! <laughs> you have been rolling like fire this game, yes. sir. Yes. Um, why am I taking it away? He regenerated. He got smashed and immediately regenerates his wounds. Regen. Amazing. Oh, God. Oh, it's just insult to injury <laughs> over here. I will shoot um, my, my crossbowman at these ghouls um, because uh, because why not basically they've only got range on the zombies and the ghouls 
There's not a whole point of peppering a couple of zombies at this point, but killing a couple of ghouls might be all right. It is harder to hit them though. And I have 12 of them in range. All right, it's going to be fives for Corporal Fletcher. Yeah, nah, he misses and sixes for the rest. Rawr. Okay, not a single hit. Oh, I got a hit, a hit. Um, mm -hmm. A ghoul still toughness four, sir. You want to check that I'll for check me? That. Still toughness four. We wound him on a four. Ah, we do wound one, sir. You will get your six up regen. Don't you do it to me again, Matty V. No, God! I didn't actually mean to do it. I'm so sorry. Ridiculous. <laughs> Ridiculous, Matty V. Would you settle down with I'm these sorry. sixes? I'm <laughs> taking these dice off you, mate. <laughs> too hot. <laughs> the heat of the red dice. Yeah. It's Ooh, burning me. Fire. My God. Well, speaking of heat, Let's throw some fireballs. <laughs> Let's see if we can make that happen. So I am going to start with the Ruby Ring of Ruin slash the Grudge Bringer Sword coming out from Morgan Bernhardt into the Grave Guard. Um, we need to see an eight getting plus two to the dice. Oh, oh yes, a natural double six. Although unfortunately it is a, uh, this doesn't, this doesn't count because a bound item can't do an irresistible force. Oh, no. How disappointing is that? Or a perfect casting, I think it's called in this one or perfect invocation. I don't know. Um, whatever the new term is, irresistible force is can't be done on a bound item, but that does become a 12, sir. So you can try and dispel it with your master necromancer. And a four plus. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Ah, twelve. You match it, but you do not beat it, so nope. it comes off, mate. Fantastic. We are getting a two d six strength four hits into the grave guard. Give me a big one. Ah, seven. That's the oh. average. Can't be sad with the average. Seven hits, strength four to toughness four. Grave guard. We are wounding on fours. Yeah. <laughs> That's. One. <laughs> oh, no. A single wound. All right, the dice aren't loving Christos today. That's all right. So, mate, it's no AP. You get a four up armor save for your heavy oh, okay. armor and shield. Nope. Nope. And you do not get a regen no, because it is a fire. fire. So one of them is destroyed, sir. All right, we're going to try another fireball from my wizard this time. And again, needing to see an eight plus four to the dice. Yeah. Um, we are getting a seven plus four is an 11, sir. Would you like to try and stop it? Yes. Of course you would. Yes. Needing to beat an 11, Matty B, so beat a 7 on the dice. Ah, Ooh. you do not! Another 2d6 strength 4 hits are coming into the Grave Guard. Yeah! Oh, four of them. Cut one! <laughs> Wounding on fours. I get two this time. Lovely, mate. Two four up armor saves because there's no AP from fireballs. Nope. Ah, kill another two. They get immolated by the fire. Lovely. <laughs> Killed three of them total. That's not going to be enough to stop you from invocating them back, but ah, I'm burning things. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's the shooting phase done, I think. Yep, that is it. That is the shooting phase done. So we go on to a, a combat phase. Yes. <laughs> the phase of combat over here. Now, I believe you can move your Hell Knight into the flank if I declare a challenge. I'm pretty sure that's the way that's going to work. I'm just going to check it real quick. All right, so um, we can, he can accept challenges with his Hell Knight because he's in the fighting rank, so he can accept the challenge. Um, we also looked into if he does accept the challenge and we move the model, does that mean the rest of my guys can't attack? And it does say in the challenge section that you can move it to, you know, display the, the, the awesome nature of the challenge or you can just leave it where it is if it's impractical to do so, um, which basically just means that it doesn't matter if we're just in base contact with him or not, the rest of the guys can attack into the unit. The challenge is an abstraction of where things actually are, and that's fine. So with all of that in mind, um, Lieutenant Shepke <laughs> will <laughs> bark out a challenge to the, the filthy knights that stand before him, the Hell Knight, you know, come and face the man of the empire. Do you accept, sir? I slap you with a dead hand. Ah! <laughs> I accept. Very good. <laughs> Very good. So a challenge will begin between Shepke and the Hell Knight. Um, now, we moved almost no inches. I mean, I suppose the wheel was a bunch, but otherwise the Ford, I don't know if the wheel counts. It costs inches. So yeah, I guess it must. But either way, I'm initiative four base, so I'm going first. So Shepke has weapon skill five as a, as a captain of the Empire um, against... Weapon skill three, Hell Knight. So we are hitting him on threes. Ah, we get one hit. Not bad, Shepke. 
Shepke wields the uh, the Sword of Might, which puts him up to Strength 5 base, to a Toughness 4 Hell Knight. We wound the Hell Knight. On a 3! Yes, very good, a wound comes through, sir. The uh, the Sword of Might has negative 1 AP, so your 3-up armor saves goes to a 4-up. Don't you do it! Yes! No! We slay the Hell Knight in single combat with no! Lieutenant Shepke. Heck yeah, well done, Shepke. Well done. Um, all right, and then it'll just be the rest of my unit putting their attacks in. All right, there are five uh, veteran Grudgebringer infantry, which are just state troops with hand, weapon, and shield, <laughs> um, uh, in the front rank, and one of them is a champion. So we are going to be hitting uh, weapon skill three to weapon skill three, hitting the rest of the Hell Knights on fours. Very good, getting two out of the five, the low end of the average, but I'll take it. And we are just strength three humans to toughness four, white abominations, wounding on fives. I get a wound, sir, no AP, so that'll be a three up armor save. No. Yeah, oh, amazing. Another hell knight does go down. We'll just take him from this side because why not? Um, all right, now, what's the initiative of your hell knights? Hell knight initiative is three. Very good. Actually, they're all three, except for the Skeletal Steed. Yes. Uh, sorry, yeah, I didn't mean Hell Knight. I just meant the Black Knights. Yeah. Flagellants are initiative three as well. So we are going to be fighting simultaneously, the Riders and the Flagellants, and the horses would go afterwards. Um, just because I'm the active player, we'll do mine first. So I have five Flagellants in base contact. We are weapon skill three. We're hitting on fours. Yeah, very good. We get three hits. Um, we are strength three. Oh, drop dice never count. Strength three to tough four, wounding on fives. We do Ooh. get a single wound, sir. That will be a three up armor save. Got Very it. good, saves it. Um, all right, you can swing back. Now, because we've killed a knight that was in base contact with this unit, nothing can swing back into them. Um, but the four knights can swing back into the, the flagellants, okay. sir. So all four into the flagellants. Indeed, four attacks into the flagellants mm -hmm. on fours. Got one. Wow, oh, boy. <laughs> it's balancing out. Yeah. <laughs> um, and wounding on threes, sir. Got you it. do get it. I will get a six up, feel no pain, ward save. No, I can't make sixes like Matty B can. <laughs> <laughs> so one does fall. And then you would get your four horses, sir. Oh, yeah. Your four horsemen. Of the apocalypse. Indeed. <laughs> um, hitting on fours. Two, Ooh, horses three. are mad. Three. Very nice. And wounding on fours. Two. Ooh. Oh, spicy. Come on. I need one of these six up. Feel no pains. The hooves. Ah, I one. make one. Amazing. Um, I suppose worth noting, if you're new to the channel, I don't do cock dice on this channel. So you can see this is... Yeah. slightly on a lip here but as long as there's a significant facing which this yeah. clearly is if you move um, that it would fall to a six exactly it's yeah. we'd go with that and if there's any sort of disputes we re-roll it but to keep things moving cock dice aren't a thing how dare you <laughs> <laughs> i joke how dare you <laughs> that is the end of the combat let's do some combat res here i think i think i may have achieved my goal we'll see so let's do me first i got Two wounds in total. I have a flank charge. I've got a battle standard bearer. Um, I have, instead of just two ranks that I would normally be claiming from this unit, I have four ranks because I have the, uh, the, the, the Griffin standard, which doubles your rank bonus that you're claiming. And I have two closed order units. Both of these units are closed order. Um, you did a single wound in response. You also have a banner and you are also closed order, sir. Now, that means currently two, four, six, seven combat reses coming through. Do they have uh, the indomitable special rule? I don't think so. They are not indomitable. Um, the, the grave guard are, but they're not. So that does mean that they take seven wounds from, from crumbling. Um, so the unit is washed. <laughs> Boom, we do it. The, the big unit of, of the, 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 the grudge bringer infantry comes to the rescue of, of the flagellants and the flagellants are pretty sad about it. <laughs> because they're, <laughs> they're here to find doom. They're, they're almost like little human slayers. Excellent, amazing, that worked out. It was, it was a bit of a gamble, um, but in the end, maybe not that much of a gamble. The numbers were on my side. Yeah, they were. Um, so we are going to attempt to restrain and reform with that unit. Here we go. Hi-ya!
They will, excellent. Just like that, reforming to face the, uh, the enemy after having slammed into the flank of the Black Knights and destroying them utterly. Excellent, that, that needed to happen, otherwise I was in a lot of trouble. So that was pretty great. The heavy cavalry are down and out, soaked the charge with the unbreakable flagellants. <laughs> Lovely. Um, but that's it. That was a pretty good swing back. You know, not uh, a completely uneventful shooting phase, but the combat phase got it done. So heck yeah for the Empire. But that is it. That is the end of Empire Turn 3. Vampire Counts Turn 4, and we are in the strategy phase into the command phase. And we're going to do some invocations of Nehek. Now, something worth noting is we just kind of looked into the whole newly dead rule when it comes to zombies, and it says that they can be healed beyond their starting wounds, whereas nothing else can. And the wording is a bit weird because what it seems to say, rules as written, is they need to be wounded before you can target them with a heal. Um, and if you happen to heal more of them than got wounded or their starting unit size, then that's fine. But then at that point, does that mean that they would need to be wounded again before you can target them with it again? Because to be honest, what the rule seems to want to do is just mean that zombies can just, you can just target them with invocation and make them a big unit and they just can get bigger and bigger and bigger. Because um, otherwise the rule seems kind of useless. Because as I said, it just means that one time once they've been wounded, they can happen to go above their starting wounds. So. To be honest, rules as written, that seems like what it is, but I am happy to play it where you can just target them with invocation to make big units of zombies. Um, because that seems like the role of a zombie, right? And mm, that seems whole... like the whole purpose of this rule. So until I find a fact or something telling me otherwise, that's how I'm gonna play it on the channel. Um, you know, put your thoughts in the comments about invocation of Nehek and the newly dead rule, but that's what we're gonna be doing. So mate, what are we what are we doing? Whose heck are we invoking? <laughs> well first I'll try to heal these guys. Very good with the with the, the vampire. With the vampire. Because he has invocation of his own. Yep. Um, a leadership eight. Oh dear. Oh seven. seven. Oh he gets it, mate. So he gets um, D3 plus one. Oh, we've got a ah, three. you finally rolled a three on a D three, yeah. mate. So you get the whole, all of them back. Yeah, <laughs> you only three. son of a gun. Very good. It healed the grave guard back. I just can't do damage. <laughs> <laughs> and then your master necromancer can uh, do invocation of the heck twice. <laughs> yes, and I'll try and do that on the zombies. Then. Fabulous, sir. Needing a leadership test of eight again. Oh, I'll take that one back. There's a four. Seven. He gets it. So you're getting D3 plus four zombies to that unit. All right, for a total of five. Five. And then attempting to target them a second time. Six, Six indeed, yep. under the leadership, getting another D3 plus four for his wizard level. Another ah, three plus oh four, God. seven. Another seven, so that will be a total of 12. Yes. And there it is, the unit swollen to unholy sizes. What in the heck? <laughs> 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 Got to do it at least you a couple of times a game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's gnarly. That's gnarly. Um, uh, maybe I've made the wrong ruling here. No, <laughs> <laughs> no it just it feels right, yeah, honestly. Otherwise, it's, it's it's kind of a useless rule <laughs> to even have it in there for the for the newly risen rule. So that's what we're doing now. He's not in range to to neck anybody. So. No. That is the end of the command phase. We do go into the conjuration phase, sir. And what would you like to conjure? I'm gonna try a conjuration of Van Hell's Dance Macabre. Very Again. good. 2d6 plus four. Oh, oh, that might be a bit too cocky. Yeah, yeah, let's uh, yeah do that one again. Being held up by a zombie arm. So uh, six ten. plus four is ten total. So I get the eight plus. You get the eight plus. I will try and oppose it with Luther Flame Strike. Um, so I need to beat the six on the 2d6. Come on, come on, let me do it. Don't do, do it. it. Don't do it. Ah, and I get a seven. seven. <laughs> yes. Yes, I hold them back because <laughs> they are stymieing this, this big scary unit. The longer I can hold that back, the better. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. That's it for... Yeah, hexes yeah, and hexes enchantments. And yep. Very good. All right, mate. That means we move into the movement phase. Do you have any charges you wish to declare? We have decided no charges. No charges. Sure. No charges. So these ghouls are 10 inches away from these flagellants, which means, you know, this one, if it rolls a five, will make it 
but almost the way skirmishes work when they charge is each model is moved individually and if they don't have enough you know distance to get to base contact they form up behind the fighting rank so this guy would need a five or six and even if he got a six that would mean maybe two of them got into base contact and then all of the rest would form up in a line of two so they're not close enough in the weird formations that they're in at the moment to get any charges so no charges at this stage um, that does bring us into the remaining move stage. Now, before you do any movement, is there any conveyance spells that you want to cast at this time? No, no conveyance spells. So we will just go into remaining moves. This is where everything is now. And this is where everything ends up. Give us the wrap up, Master B. So I'm checking the, my zombies. I wanted to give a bit more space. And the only thing we could figure out was probably doing the shift two inches to the left. Um, because otherwise I'd be exposing my flank to charges and so forth. Indeed. Um, unfortunately it wasn't quite enough. My, my knights tried to, uh, my, my grave guard. grave guard, sorry, tried to move up, but they got a little caught there still. So there's a chance that I'm going to get charged and crushed, but I have <laughs> other options Indeed. <laughs> in the future. Indeed. Um, I have obviously shuffled forward. I've got my uh, zombies coming towards these guys, my ghasts, the ghouls coming over here, these ghouls stepping forward, uh, the poor fellas at the back there coming up. <laughs> <laughs> the poor irrelevant skeletons yeah. and white king. <laughs> They're there for moral support. Yep, indeed. <laughs> um, um, that's pretty much it. Oh yes, and also I did a wee fly with my little whizzy. Yes, because it is still ethereal and flying. Yeah. And just flying around like a ghostly, ghostly necromancer. Um, sweet. Yeah, look. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about this a bit in the post game, but not taking hellish vigor has yes. hamstrung this yes. army savagely. Yes. You know, it was the first time in this edition and I have found an, an understanding now that it is a must yeah. because yeah. These poor yeah. units are just not going anywhere. Yeah. So that's movement phase done. We go into the shooting phase, sir, and it's all gonna be magic missiles and whatnot. What yes. would you like to start with? I'm gonna start with a spiritual vortex. Very good. It is a 11 plus. Very um, good. So it's a hard one, but we'll give it a go. Plus four. Ooh, nine plus four. Um, oh, that'll be 13. 13? All right, so I need to see a 10 on this 2d6 to stop it, because I need to beat a 13. Can we hold back the, the spiritual vortex needing a 10? Oh, I get a 9! No, we are one off! All right, mate, the spiritual vortex comes out. Let's get it on the field. And there it is, placed in front of all of my troops. A vortex of spirits. The necromantic gestures and dark energy swirls, opening a vortex into the realm of Ma. Ooh. God of death. Realm of more? More. <laughs> I said Ma. Oh, you did. <laughs> <laughs> so That's the, fine. The effect remains in play. It's a five blast template. Central hull is within 12 of the cast, of which we've done. Indeed. Uh, whilst within eight of the template, enemy units suffer a negative one modifier to the leadership characteristics and cannot use their general's inspiring presence special rule. Ooh, spicy. So I th I'm assuming that's pretty much everyone. Yeah, that'll be all of those units. <laughs> Indeed, everyone's, yep. you know, their their leadership is being sapped as this this horrific rift into the land of the dead opens before them. Um, sapping their courage. Sapping. All right, sweet. That's that one done, mate. Yep. You got a magic missile as well? I think I will. Very good. Um, um, I'm going to pop it into these guys. All right, what do you need to cast it? Uh, that is a 8 plus. 8 plus on your 2d6. Oh, you six. get a six plus four. Ten. Ten. I need to see a seven on the 2d6 to stop it. Ah, oh, yes. He yes. me. Unbinding. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Amazing. Double six is coming out all over oh, the no, place this game. so much magic just going poof, poof, poof. Yeah, but yet, battle. no double ones. No miscasts yet. Yeah, <laughs> true. There's probably true. one coming now. <laughs> <laughs> you said it too late. So that brings us uh, to the end of the movement phase, which means we do have some reserve moves to be yeah. done because the ghouls can still do some reserve moves. Um, uh, let's get them moved out. Yes. And that is where the two units of ghouls end up charging towards the cannon and the, the flagellants, uh, getting ready to eat some man flesh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's it. That is the end of uh, Vampire Celts, turn four.
Empire of Man, turn four, and we are going into the conjuration phase. So I am going to attempt to dispel this spiritual vortex. Um, what is the number I need to beat, sir? 11. An 11, all right, so. 2d6 plus 4, here we go. Whoa. A double 1! Ah, okay. Oh no, that's not good. <laughs> oh god! Oh, oh boy! Oh, that's really not good. <laughs> I, what did I say just the other time? Like just before? Yeah, yeah, no double 1s have come out yet? Oh. Um, now, I don't know if this is an outclassed in the art or not. Alright, so there is nothing in the rules stating that attempting to dispel a remains in play uh, spell after it has been cast will not create an outclassed in the art result on a roll of double one. So, yep, it just says roll of double one when attempting a wizardly dispel, and that is what happened. So, you know, as as the necromancer was still controlling it, he, he outclassed me severely. Um, and I am going to, to, to reap my rewards. <laughs> <laughs> so we are rolling a 2d6 on the miscast table. Let's see what happens. I need to not see a 2 to 4. <laughs> high dice. High dice is what we need. A 10 to 12. <laughs> what do we get? Oh, that's a, a 3! Three. Three. That's, that's a 3. A three. I think that's between ah, 2 and 4. Ah. Bugger. <laughs> well. so bad. Oh my god. Alright, well we get a dimensional cascade. Oh my god. The summoned magic breaks free, creating an ethereal tornado. Center a 5 inch blast template over the wizard. Every model, friend or foe, whose base lies underneath the template risks being hit. Uh, and suffering a single strength 10 hit with AP negative 4. Biggity boy. All right, so we have two of my Grudgebringer cavalry clipped by the template, five of my Grudgebringer infantry clipped by the template, two of the infantry are completely under and hit automatically, and the wizard is also completely under and hit automatically. All right, let's, let's start by seeing if either of my, my heavy cavalry in a circle Grudgebringer knights go into the hit pool, so they are going to get hit on fours. Please no. Yay! Yay! They ignore being hit. Well done. How many more of the Grudgebringer infantry come into the hit pool on four pluses? None! Oh, hey. this is amazing! Yeah! Alright! <laughs> Hooray! My bad rolls are starting to pay off! Alright, the two boys that are completely under are just getting vaporized on twos. Oh, one of them doesn't! Oh, get vaporized. One of them gets completely vaporized. This one right here, standing next to the wizard, just yeah. blows! That makes sense. <laughs> um, and then the wizard himself will get wounded by this explosion of magic. On a two plus. Yes, and sure oh. enough, he loses a wound. Oh boy, Luther. And there he is. He has taken a single wound by attempting a dispel. And there it is. That's a fun new mechanic for this edition as well, is uh, miscasts while dispelling. So there he is. He was outclassed in the art by this this devilish master necromancer. My jade wizard, Alor, is going to attempt to uh, put earthen ramparts in front of the Grudge Bringer cavalry. Well, actually, what's its range? Range 15. Can you check if I'm within 15 range inches of my, my Grudge Bringer cavalry? Yes. yes. Fabulous. We are in range. We need a 10 plus to cast it. Ha! Huh. And I get a 7 plus 2 is a 9. Oh my god. You're the worst, Alor. You are the worst, <laughs> right? He, he, got, he got one teleport yeah. off. He got one travel the mystic pathways. <laughs> but still, mate, come on. I will attempt to cast Curse of Arrow Attraction on the zombies because I've got no other good targets. So, and this is coming from, um, from Luther Flamestrike. All right, mate. <laughs> you've you've shaken yourself a little. <laughs> let's let's keep it cool now. <laughs> Curse of Arrow Attraction is a seven plus. Ha! Ah! And I do get it on seven. a seven, sir, which goes up to an eleven. I just need an eight then. Indeed, you need an eight to stop it. Yeah. That'll do it. As for nine, dispelled. Very good. I'm going to cast Curse of Cowardly Flight, <laughs> uh, which is a hex from Luther Flamestrike onto your grave guard. Okay. <laughs> and this is going to make them force them to take a panic test. Even though they are immune to psychology, they still have to roll it. And if they fail, they give ground two inches back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Curse of Cowardly Flight needs a 9 plus. 
And I get it, mate, on an 11 15. So you need to see a 12 to stop yeah. it. I don't know <laughs> you if that's going to happen. You need a double six. Come on, baby. No. no. All right. So they are going to need to take a leadership test, sir, on leadership eight. Come on, baby. I'll do it. Hang six. on. A, uh, six. Damn. I was going to say, are they within uh, eight inches of that? Because if they are, they've got minus one leadership. <gasps> oh, says enemy units. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my conjuration phase done. That does take us to the movement phase. Um, and the first thing I am going to do, I'm going to move my Jade Wizard so that he's, he's just hopefully out of your, uh, <laughs> your aura. I am fabulous. And he is going to attempt to cast Travel the Mystic Pathways. I don't second like this time. One. Yes. <laughs> We're going to teleport a cannon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We're going to give it a red hot go. Ooh, although I could instead shoot these guys with the cannon with a grape shot shot. I definitely still won't do enough damage to kill them. So no, I'm not. I'm going to try and teleport them. And then if it doesn't work out, then I'll, yeah, <laughs> then I'll shoot them with a grape shot. Um, so travel the Mystic Pathways again needs a 10 plus. So I need to see an eight. This is your spell, Alor. This is the <laughs> one. This is the one that you have the affinity with. Show me an eight. A seven. Oh, Boo. No. Boo hiss. Gosh, dang it. Um, oh. Oh, I have an earthing rod on him. Ah, oh, which means I get to re-roll the miscast on the miscast table. Bah! I won't do it. I okay. won't bother. If it happens again, I'll yes, remember. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, but that's the thing. I've got an earthing rod. Earthing boo, rod. boo, I could have re-rolled that. Oh, well. I failed. I failed to cast the <laughs> damn spell. Very good. So we'll just... It's, it's, I, I shouldn't have actually done that because right, I've got charges to declare. <laughs> oh, no. My bad. Um, but these guys are going to charge the ghouls because obviously. But that's it. That's the only charge I'm doing. I'm not going to charge through the dangerous terrain to get to the zombies. So your, your thing is doing the business. <laughs> um, I don't need to roll this and they are immune to psychology. So fear doesn't matter. So we just go. Nope. Nope. And then they will form up around me. Um, we'll do that in the remaining moves. Don't worry about it. So then I'm just going to do remaining moves. So. This is where everything is now. And this is where everything ends up. I don't think I did much. <laughs> uh, my cavalry did a, a little shuffle and a wheel. And honestly, I think that's it. What a movement phase. Huzzah. Huzzah. <laughs> uh, we go into the shooting phase. Time for magic. I am going to start with a fireball from the Grudgebringer sword into the Graveguard. We need an eight plus two. Beautiful. I do get an 11 total. Sorry, nine. 10, 11, yes, an 11 total, Matty B. You need to beat an 11. Or go. Oh, yeah. Ah, nice. you do not, sir. Ooh. So, oh wait, is that? Wait, seven. Seven yes. plus seven four, four is, is 11. 11. You need to beat 11, beat. my friend. Yes. So no, we are getting a 2d6 strength four hits from the Grudgebringer sword into the Grave Guard for nine, fabulous. That's a lot of hits. Nine strength four hits into toughness four Grave Guard. We do wound them on fours. Ooh, wow. That's, okay, that's, I only failed two. That's pretty amazing. Seven of them, sir. No AP, so f uh, seven four up armor saves for your heavy armor and shield. So seven four ups. Indeed. Rah. Oh, you make a bunch. You fail three though, yeah. so three of those boys are immolated. Immol no, uh, no regen because flaming attacks. Immolation. All right, let's do it again. But this time from Luther Flame Strike. I again, like needing an eight fireball. Ha! Ah, oh, we get a six total, mate, um, which just means, you know, that does go off on a, what, 10? 10. You just need to beat the six. So you need yep. to see a seven on the dice. You yep. do with an eight. You hold back Luther, but you know, the, the Grudge Bringer sword is too powerful. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's the Ruby Ring of Ruin, just in case people have forgotten. That's all my magic, so we go on to regular shooting. I am going to start with my crossbowmen up there with Corporal Fletcher, and they are going to fire at the zombies, because they're the only things that are in range. Um, and even then, it's only the front rank that are in range. This, this hill was much too far back for me <laughs> to be able to use effectively, apparently. Lame. All right, eight shots. One of them is the Corporal himself. He is going to be hitting on fours because of range. Ha! Ah. Oh, he gets a hit. Well done, Corporal. Um, and then the rest of them are hitting on fives, negative one, because long range. Oh yeah, Not getting bad. another three Not hits. Bad. Four hits in total. Pretty good. Strength four crossbows to toughness three rotting corpses. We kill on threes. 
Um, at Slash, you get regens. I got two wounds, mate. Two mm -hmm. six-up regens. No. Huzzah! I think that's the first time you've rolled regens and not gotten any. <laughs> <laughs> uh, beautiful. Two of them are down. Yep. yep, you can just take them away. <laughs> um, and then I'll come over here to uh, Johan Kieler's Longbowman, and they are going to be shooting into the ghouls. Now, the ghouls, apart from two of these boys, they are in short range. The rest are in... Uh, so two guys are in, in long range, the rest are in short. There is only four of the ten in the woods, so I do, they do not get the, the cover bonus, because you need to have at least 50% of the models obscured or in woods. So let's, let's do it. Eleven of them, and one of them is the marksman. He will be hitting on threes, because short range, yeah, he mm -hmm. gets them. Deadeye. Old Deadeye Johan. <laughs> um, two of them are going separately long range, so hitting on fives. Oh, one of them hits. Lovely. And then the rest of them at short range on fours. Oh, oh. no, wait, no, what am I saying? These are skirmishes. Um, so the one on fives didn't hit because um, they actually needed sixes and these guys need fives. So there we go. There we go. Um, uh, Johan hit. We got yeah. four hits total. I wasn't doing the negative one for the skirmishers, oh, people, yeah. but I got there in the end. <laughs> four hits total. We need fives to wound them. Let's see if we can put down... A filthy ghoul. Fives. Ooh, nope. two wounds, mate. Not two six-up regens. Oh, that's a five. Yeah, that's a five. Yep, two of them do go down, sir. You can pull them from wherever you would like. From the back. Makes sense. <laughs> then it's time to do some canoning. Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll shoot that cannon into the graveguard. Taking a while for me to figure out what canoning was. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fair. <laughs> All right, the uh, the six from the front of the unit has been working out for me. I've gone over almost every time. So I'm going eight from the front this time and we'll see what happens. So eight from the front of the grave guard from the cannon on the hill. Yeah. A misfire. Oh, no. A misfire. That cannon's ah, broken, man. No. The cannon's broke. Bugger. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are again at the black powder misfire table. Let's see a five and six this time. Just pfft. Come on, let's see it. What do we get? Yeah, two! Uh, two is again a malfunction. So the charge once again misfires. One of those boys becomes terminally inconvenienced. <laughs> <laughs> And rotating uh, but, yeah. um, No, no, I want the other guy. Give me the, the other guy. guy. Give me the, the pole man. Yeah, pole. He, and we need sucks. the guy that lights it still to yeah. be there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, while all of that has been happening, these boys down in the woods have been frantically shoving rocks <laughs> and nails and pieces of, you know, extraneous armor. One of them's taken off a chainmail coif and shoved <laughs> it into the, the front there. And they're going to attempt to grape shot these here ghouls. So... We pivot to face them, and the way this works is we roll a single artillery die, and whatever comes up is how many automatic strength 4 negative 1 AP hits are coming into those ghouls. So we could get anywhere from 2 hits to 10 hits, or the devilish misfire again, <laughs> which would be hilarious at this point. <laughs> so. They, they shove the things in, they light the fuse, and... <laughs> oh, oh baby, the big it's one! The it's the big one! Awesome, Ooh, yeah! I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Ten automatic hits coming through. Strength four to toughness four ghouls. We're wounding ghouls on fours. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Looks like half of them. Yeah, Statistical, statistics. baby. Vital statistics. Um, that is five six-up regions, my friend. Uh, one. Two. Two. You son of a gun. I am a son of a gun. <laughs> so three of them die. Which ones do you want? Back ones. The three back ones. Yeah. Boom. The others just sprint forward to take their places. It was obviously the ones at the front. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. They, the no, tree goes dunked. down. <laughs> <laughs> they dunked <laughs> the boys in the back. <laughs> that's hilarious. Very good. I think that's it. That was all my shooting. Yep. Yep. <laughs> we yep. killed yep. five yep. ghouls and three grave guard. Um, not the worst. And not two zombies. Worst. And a couple of zombies. That yeah. counts. That counts yeah. for something, right? Yeah. <laughs> right, guys. <laughs> all right, but that is it. Um, oh no, wait. We have <gasps> combat. another combat phase. A glorious phase of combat. Mm. And it is once again, it's, it's the, the, the flagellants against filthy ghouls this time. 
Now, Flagellants get a bunch of fun special rules in the first round of combat, and particularly when they charge, or at least have a chance to swing. <laughs> so firstly, they have Flails, which they get plus two strength in the first round of combat. They have the Furious Charge special rule, which gives them plus one attack in the f if, if, when they charge. And they also have Hatred, which allows them to re-roll their attacks in the first round of combat. So, here we go. There's five of them in that front rank, which means ten attacks. All right, ten attacks coming out. We are weapon skill three. I'm assuming a ghoul is also weapon skill three? I believe so. Weapon skill three. Very good. Weapon skill three, which means we are hitting these ghouls on fours. Ugh, that's not a good start. We got three hits out of ten in the first volley, but we do have hatred in the first round of combat. We That's hate true. everybody. We despise them and they're a front to Sigma. <laughs> and so we re-roll all of these again needing fours. It netted me one extra hit. <laughs> Rerolling everything, I still got less than the average. <laughs> oh god, oh it hurts. Oh. It hurts. They're tired, you know. They've, all, they've already <laughs> they've been here a couple know, of times. They got smashed by by knights, and they don't have their their doom caller there anymore. It's made them a bit sad. <laughs> But they are um, a strength 5 on the charge because of their flails, or just in the first round of combat, to toughness 4, which means wounding on 3s. Getting 2? Should have been 3! God damn it! Can't roll average, apparently! Uh, 6 ups, mate. Yeah, no. good, good, good. If you had made one of those, I would have been salty. <laughs> so salty. <laughs> All right, four of them attacking back, and one of them is the gas. So nine attacks back, hitting on fours, Matty B. Ooh. And you got what? What did you get? One, two, three, Six four, five, six. out of the nine? Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but strength, oh wait, hang on, were any of those sixes? All right, one out of those six was an auto wound from poison. Um, so now rolling to wound with the next five dice, uh, um, needing fours to wound. Oh, I'm sorry. I, ooh, that's a one. Yeah. Two wounds, two wounds, which means three wounds in total. Um, and I will just have six up, feel no pains against them. Come on, none. <laughs> none of them. So you kill three in response. Oh boy. <laughs> God, that's ridiculous. God, God damn it. I'm okay. I'm all right, ladies and gentlemen. It just, <laughs> just feels bad when things go completely wrong, when you charge and it all goes to hell. <laughs> all right, so let's do you. You killed three, um, and that's it. I killed two, and I am a closed order unit. Um, I don't have a musician, and neither do you, so it is a tie combat. Whoa. Wow. Special. Tie combat. And at this point, my unit is significantly worse, and yours is the same. Yeah. <laughs> I lose all of the things. Oh, God, that feels bad. But that's all right. That's, that's all, right. all right. Shake it off, Christos. <laughs> Make your own personal leadership test. You've got leadership seven right now. You failed it. <laughs> I'm out of here. He's running the house. I'm out. <laughs> I got his room. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, oh god. <laughs> well that's it. That's the end of Empire. <laughs> turn four. Vampire counts turn five. Um, and in the start of turn subphase, Maddie B is gonna end this spell. Indeed, he clicks the fingers and the vortex dissipates. <laughs> We go into the command phase and we are going to nehex some boys back from death. Okay, I'm gonna nehex with my vampire. To try and get my grave guard. gravy guards back. Yeah, you want to just roll it over here for yep. me, mate? That's a seven. Yeah, that's fine. That's under your eight. Yep. Very good. He gets uh, D3 plus one back. That's for a two. three in yep. total, which is the exact amount that got killed. Yep. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> These three have just been doing a little dance in the back. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> that's that, Nehek done. Which one's next, mate? I'll Nehek the zombies. The zombies. All right. I'm doing it with the master necromancer. Yes. So looking for an under a seven. And of course, three. you do. You roll a three. Um, getting D3 plus four zombies back to the unit. I can't see that at One. all, Matty B. Lovely. <laughs> so five zombies in total. 
return to the unit. And there they are, swollen yet again beyond their starting size for the, the newly dead rule. Holy <laughs> god, that is a massive unit. All right, he has a second invocation of Nehek because of his Staff of Nerud or something like that. Um, and he's targeting the ghouls. Let's again, leading for a leadership eight. No! Oh, he fails it! Yeah. How amazing! It's the first one he's failed! Yay! Love that. <laughs> oh, no invocation. I want All my right. Back. Um, so that's that's the end of the because uh, he is out of range for these zombies. Mm -hmm. um, so no more invocates. That's command phase done. We go to the conjuration phase, sir, and we're looking to put another Van Hell's dance macabre on the oh. zombies. Yes, on the zombies. See if we can get them out of the way of this of this graveyard. All right, Matty B, needing an eight or a twelve. Right. I got a nine. Plus, Plus four, four is a 13. a 13. So I need to see a 10 on the dice for Luther Flamestrike to hold back that magic. Give me the 10. Nah, an eight. Damn, oh. damn and damnation. All right, the spell does go off Matty B. As a 12 As plus. a 12. So yes, what are you going to give them? I'll get the rolly rolly first. Okay, yeah, fine. Hurrah. Oh, Yay, and it's finally it's a plus happened! Three. The plus three! Oh, three, three. I can do it, yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, weapon skill and movement. Weapon skill and movement for the ghouls. Lovely. Zoomies. Look at that. Yeah, the, the zoomies. <laughs> All right, well, that does bring us to the movement phase. Do you have any charges you would like to declare, sir? I have a bunch of ghouls over there. Very good. Like charging charge cannon. the cannon. Um, do and I like, guess these guys. Yeah, you're gonna declare a charge with the zombies into <laughs> into my boys. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a bit scary. <laughs> well, they are gonna have to take a fear check. Um, do I hold or do I flee? No, I'll hold. I'll hold, mate. Which means I do need to do a leadership test. Leadership test on leadership nine. We Ooh, fear them uh, not fine. on an eight. An fine eight for the nine. Indeed. Um, so. This one we don't have to roll. They're, they're well within their normal movement characteristic. That one we're going to have to roll, mate. Yes. So you are now movement seven? Yes. All right. Plus 2d6 picking the highest. Let's see what you get, mate. I got oh, a six. mate, a six. That's the top. Whip. I think those zombies are in. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're well and truly in. No problem. The zombies being finally danced into combat. <laughs> yes. Amazing. <laughs> Terrifying. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll move all of those in in the remaining move step. Now, did you want to, uh, did you want to uh, cast any conveyance spells? Yes, I'm going to transfer my spectral steed that I had on my master wizard. Yes. And he's going to cast it on his little brother. Ah, oh, to give him the fly in ethereal. Yes. All right, well, mate, try and cast it up. Uh, so this is a nine plus. Nine plus. Hurrah. Gets it. Gets it no problem. So eight on the dice. I will try and stop it. So I need to see a nine on the dice. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh yes. Oh, I, I, unbind I unbind you. Oh, I unbind you. No spectral steed for anyone. Uh, I wanted a spectral steed. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> that done. We will we'll move the charges in. They should be getting moved in before that, but it doesn't matter realistically. And then we'll go through to the remaining moves. So this is where everything is now. And... Uh, this is where everything ends up. The skeletons and the necromancer pushed up a little bit. The zombies pushed forward. The, the grave guard and the vampire finally unlocked from their, their cage <laughs> of flesh. <laughs> Have finally wheeled out into the open somewhat around the edge of the impassable terrain. The uh, necromancer lord, the master necromancer, moved up shimmying somewhat as well. And both units have been moved in. Lovely. That is the movement phase done. We go to the shooting phase, sir. What would you like to shoot? I am going to shoot a magic missile at them. Very good. From here. Yes. Yes, grand. Grand I'm pretty great. sure I'm still within 15. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yes. Yes, and you can draw line of sight to them, so no worries. Um, now, something worth noting is in my first game of the old world, I was making sure that everything was in the vision arc. But I think that only matters if you're in a ranked up unit, right? If you're skirmishing, you know, he's he's a single model. He has 360 mm. view by before being a lone character slash, you know, a skirmisher. I'm pretty sure that's the case. That's how we've been playing it. And that's how we're playing it now. I mean, either way, he would have moved him like this. So we could have seen him otherwise. But 
Like I said, I don't think arcs matter if you're in skirmish formation or if you're a lone character, but put it in the comments if that is not the case. Do things, do spells have to still be in your front arc when you're a lone character? I don't think so, and that's how we're playing it this game. Um, all right, Matty B, shoot off your magic missile. What is it called? Uh, this one, uh, Unquiet Spirits. Ah, yes, the Unquiet Spirits. Very good, sir. And it's a casting value of 8+. Plus. 8+, plus. very good. And obviously, back on these guys. At my knights. Oh. my knights. Oh, dear. 8+. Plus. We got an 8. You get the 8, mate. Should be a 12. Indeed, so I need to see a 9 on these 2d6 to dispel it. Because <laughs> I am dispel. equal to you in wizardly prowess. No! Prowess. No! Oh, God, oh. that's so bad. All right, mate. So it's 3d6, strength 2 hits. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, it's still magic. I need to use my magic dice. What am I doing? So 3d6. So we've got five, eight, nine. Nine. Very good, sir. It is strength two to toughness three. Roll them over here for me. Yeah. You are just killing on fives. Oh, that doesn't look as good as it should be. That it's looks one. like one. <laughs> one of these men, blam, is, you know, the, the spirits rake him with their ethereal claws, slashing and ripping flesh right beneath his armor, pulling him and un unhorsing him. Terrible. I'm also going to attempt a spiritual vortex and put it here. Okay, let's see it. I got 11. You got 11. I need a double six to stop it. Ha! Nope, I don't. <laughs> All right, put down your vortex, mate. And there it is. The, the spiritual vortex has again just opened up a gateway into, into the, the realm of more, the realm of the dead, sapping the, the courage of the men around it. Um, and meaning that they are unable to use my general's leadership. <laughs> that's, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. All right, very good. Do you have anything else that can be shot in the shooting phase, sir? No. Fabulous. Well, we go into a combat phase, a glorious combat so phase. Combat. Now, would you like to start over here with the cannon or with the big one? Cannon, let's start at the top. Go on for the cannon. Yeah. Here they are. The ghouls finally making it to to the to men and, and flesh. I'll just, you know, thematically push my men forward to come and fight. <laughs> Very good. So we have got four ghouls in contact, one of which is the ghast. So that's going to be nine attacks. Nine, yeah. uh, all right, mate, you and just roll them here for me, yep. hitting on fours. Ooh, that's a good one. That's, oh my god, that's a lot of auto wounds. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, that looks like three, I did just roll that one. Three sixes already, so there. three, oh my goodness, okay. Four, <laughs> <laughs> four sixes, four poisons, and then those two wounding on fours. One. Very good, five wounds. <laughs> um, I don't know if I have armor, but I'll roll it just in case, but what was it, five in total? Uh, yes. Yes. All right, let's say that I had light armor and I still lost three wounds, which is the unit destroyed. The cannon is killed in the woods. Blah. They are eaten and ravaged by the ghouls. Um, now you can overrun if you want, 2d6. Yes, let's do that. Very good. All right, mate, overrunning at 2d6 into the back lines. Three. <laughs> fabulous. They will just... A two gorged. Uh, yeah, indeed. <laughs> two gorged on the meat. <laughs> so not close enough to create any panic checks, but there they are. The ghouls have ravaged the cannons, sprinting through them and eating them mercilessly. Brutal. Yum, 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 yum. Um, very good, sir. And then I actually forgot this combat. Do you want to do this combat or the big one? Yeah, let's do another lot of ghouls. Yes, another lot of ghouls. What is the initiative of a ghoul? Three. Very good. I am also initiative three, so we'll be going simultaneously, sir. No, 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 no. Um, so you, I feel like you're going to do all the damage. Let's just do me first, so okay. I don't have to remove the models before <laughs> before attacking with them. Um, I've got five guys. We are going to hit you on fours. Very good, we get two hits. We're gonna wound you on fives now because we have used our fury of the flails and we just go down to strength three versus toughness four. Wounding on fives, no wounds. Yep, sweet. No. <laughs> you can attack, mate. 13 attacks, hitting on fours. Six is a poison. Oh wow, not a single poison this time. Not poison. But a bunch of hits. Very good, sir. Looks like six hits of the 13. Just the, the low end of the average. Wounding on fours. 
A single wound. A single wow. wound. All right. Wow. That we, did not work we as well. Both whiffed this one. This, <laughs> this, this is their second round. They're all pretty tired. Yes. Yeah, so um, and we'll get a single six up. Uh, feel no pain. Not ward save. We will not save it. And another one falls. Blam. Mm. So um, you win by one. Um, uh, because you is because I oh, actually know I am a closed order unit and you got one wound so it's another tie <laughs> <laughs> amazing for ages yeah yeah it's a, such an even combat between <laughs> the hungry ghouls and the zealous flagellants you remember the, the zealous flagellants have also held off knights yeah they have it's they're, true they're pretty, pretty goji at the moment mate they are yeah. <laughs> they are the greatest of all time <laughs> all right and now we come to the big one the absolute wall of rotting flesh finds fresh flesh. <laughs> <laughs> the grudge bringer, heavy infantry, veteran infantry, um, against against the the, the, the the hordes of unliving flesh. Amazing. Um, you don't have a champion, so we can't do challenges. So, mate, it's just going to be your full front rank fighting. What do we got? So we just remembered that they have plus three weapon skill from Van Hell's Dance Macabre. Yay! <laughs> so we're going to redo that whole combat. We're going to re-roll all of it because that would have changed things significantly. So let's do it. Feels bad, ladies and gentlemen. I, I even feel bad. I know. Matty B was like, no, no, no. Let's just let's just move past it. And I was like, no, I can't. I can't. We have to do it properly because that this makes... my fault for it. A huge difference and I'm not doing it. So we, we were close enough to catch it to just do it again. If we were a turn away, I'd move past it, but we're here. So let's do it properly. All right, Matty B. So it's going to be seven attacks. Um, do you want to divide any of them again? Might as well do the same thing. All right. So three attacks into my my BSB captain, into into whatever his name is. <laughs> and it was four others. Yep, and four others. So let's start with the three. At fours to hit. Got two. two hits, and it's going to be fives to wound him because he is toughness four. He's a thick boy. No. Nope. No wounds. Very good. Four attacks into the unit on threes now because of Van Hell's nope. Dance Macabre. A One. single hit? Okay. Oh boy. I thought you were trying to roll bad. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and then fours to wound, mate. Yeah, One. Fours to wound. No. No wounds. Oh my god, it's ended up exactly the same so far. <laughs> It's going to be a two attacks from Lieutenant Shepke, um, hitting on fours, because he's only weapon skill five, and they are all weapon skill five, incredibly fast and adept. Zombies, he gets one hit. Uh, he kills on a three. Mm. He does kill one, sir. Do you regenerate him? Regenerate him. No. no. Yes, we kill a zombie. Fabulous. <laughs> and then it will be the five attacks from the rest of the boys. They are going to be hitting on fours. Ah, only getting three hits. And wounding on fours, getting two, two wounds, sir, two regenerates. No! No, we regenerate none of them, two of them do fall. Boom, boom. All right, so the, the butcher's bill is significantly lower, but the result will likely be the same. So I killed three. I have four ranks claimed from, uh, from the, uh, the, the Griffin standard. I have a battle standard bearer in the unit, and I am closed order. Um, you have three ranks, banner and closed order, so you will instead crumble by a further four, Matty B. So you just lose the back rank in total, and you'll get pushed back two inches. We, <laughs> we did it properly, ladies and gentlemen. He's got a few more zombies, but the result was the same. Yes. Huzzah! Huzzah! We'll, uh, we'll move them back and we'll be back. And that is where the zombie unit ends up after being pushed back. Forced back two inches, giving ground reluctantly, and I will attempt to restrain with my uh, restrain pursuit or restrain following up um, uh, with my boys there because because it seems like the right choice. Um, <laughs> and we are, can't use our general's inspiring presence, and we're at negative one leadership because of this this gateway to more. So we go from leadership eight from from Lieutenant Shepke down to leadership seven. Do we restrain? We do not. <gasps> no, restraint. we don't have it in us. And so we must pursue and just go slamming a bomb back into the unit straight ahead. Dang, dang, <laughs> that's not exactly what I wanted, but that will have to do. All right, that, that is the turn. Um, we, we ate and butchered the cannon in the woods. 
Um, Maddie B slammed into my front lines and got forced back. Twice. <laughs> twice. <laughs> twice, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but we did it properly, so yeah. hurrah. Huzzah. But that is it. That is the end of Vampire Counts, turn five. Empire of Man, turn five, potentially the final turn of the game, <laughs> which is pretty spicy. Um, uh, let's, let's make it happen. So we will go into the conjuration phase and I am once again going to attempt to dispel this filthy spiritual vortex, this gateway into the land of the dead. Um, so, what is the what is the casting value? Eleven plus. All right. So I think I need to beat the casting value rather than meet it. So I need to beat an eleven here on these two d six. Last time I attempted this. My wizard miscast. <laughs> he was outclassed in the art. Let's see if he's figured it out. You know, he's had time to study the vortex and study the, the tendrils of power coming from this master, master necromancer. And he attempts to, to, to close the gate. He calls upon the winds and... <gasps> that scared the crap out of me. Very scary. He fails, he fails. Because <laughs> what is that? Die. A six plus four is a 10. So that is not enough. All right, I'm gonna start with a Curse of Arrow Attraction onto the Grave Guard because the front rank of my of my, um, my crossbowmen are in range. So let's do it, see if we can get reroll ones for them. So looking for a seven, hurrah! And I get an eight, plus four is a 12, sir. So you will need a, you know, you need to get, beat an eight on the dice. So annoying. Annoying. Oh, 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 oh number one, oh, 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 number one, oh, 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 outclassed in the arm. Oh boy, <laughs> here we are again, Yay. but this time on the other side of the table. Fantastic. So we are rolling at 2d6 on the miscast, or in this case, unclassed, <laughs> uh, outclassed, outclassed table. table. <laughs> All right, mate, 2d6, you need to, you don't want to be rolling that for. You want high, high yeah, dice I here, high high I think let's, this is a revenge thing, guys. Let's see it right here. <laughs> Wouldn't mind seeing a one to four. Ah, six. six, you diggity dog. So we have, a calamitous detonation. Roiling magic explodes from the wizard in a flash of light. Center a three inch blast template over the wizard. Every model, friend or foe, whose base lies underneath the template risks being hit and suffering a single strength six hit with an AP of negative two. All right, so one of these grave guard is being clipped by the template. So he will come into the hit pool on a four plus. He does. That grave guard is getting uh, just so uh, just one dice. Grave guard is getting killed on a two plus. Yep. Ah, very good. AP negative two, so it will be a six up armor save. Nope. Nope. And then a five up regen, sir, for the Drakenhof banner. Hey, very nice. He is regenerated, and so he's not killed. And then we are wounding himself on a two plus. Oop, that's a five. Yes, yes, that is a five. Um, now, does he have regen? I, I imagine do he would. Not know. I would assume so. Yes, he has a five up. All right, five up regen to regenerate the the lost wound from the the outclassing. Ooh, you son it. of a gun! God damn it! Ah, uh, very good. Um, also, while checking how many wounds they have, I realized that my guy has three <laughs> wounds, so he has two wounds remaining, and not the one that he's been marked with for a while. So the curse of arrow attraction does go off on this unit. Fabulous! People will be re-rolling ones to hit. Love that. Um, you know what, at this point, it is worth noting that while looking up a bunch of stuff, we also realized that the only things that have flammable in the undead army, or in the VC, the, the vampire counts, are vampires and vampiric style units. So, Vargulfs, vampires, blood knights, they have the flammable rule. Nothing else does. <laughs> <laughs> We've been playing it like it did. Indeed, which actually just means that they would always be getting their their regens against the fireballs that I've been throwing out. I mean, in the end, it doesn't actually make a difference because no. they're at full strength. <laughs> I am not worried. We've been hacking them back every time. <laughs> yeah. So, so, but that is worth noting, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, the only flammable units are vampires and vampiric units. Um, all right, so they are hexed, fabulous. Um, I am going to attempt to cast another in, uh, an enchantment. I'm going to try and get Alor to put earthen ramparts on 
on those boys, on the, the infantry. Give what them... does the little rocky thing do? Does it throw my zombie out of the way? <laughs> it, just, <I> don't know, <laughs> it just like crushes their toes as it comes up in between us. Um, and so this needs a 10 plus. I need to see an eight on the dice. Come on, Alor. I don't know if you've gotten this off yet. Do it, do it, mate. He gets an eight at last, um, which becomes a 10. Fabulous. Um, you can fated dispel it if you would like, because he is try. out of range from Alor. We need to see a 10 on the dice, mate. <gasps> oh, it's off the table. At two, even oh. if you get a six, then you don't, don't get, get it, Matty yeah. B. So, so no, <sighs> no luck, no love. So excellent, Earthen Ramparts will be will be coming up on the Dorj in front of that unit, giving them a five up ward save, and That's having nice. them as if they are behind a defended obstacle. Love that. That's pretty great. That's it. That's it for conjuration. So that does bring us to the movement phase and declare charges. I am going to declare a charge with the Grudge Bringer Cavalry into the front of the uh, of the zombies, and you know what? This this may very be the may very well be the last turn. You know, this is end of turn five. Yep, yep. And at the end of this turn, there's a one in three chance that the game ends right here. So I'm going to go balls to the wall, and I'm sending in Carl Sven Carlson's House Cavalry into the flank as well, which means they're all going to just be riding through this dangerous terrain, this swirling gateway of more. And so they go sounding the horns of war, mm -hmm. and they bellow and charge through. So let's see how many of them, if any, die as they go through this swirling spiritual vortex. Um, so we will start with, uh, well actually we'll roll the charges. So firstly, the, the, the cavalry, the Grudgebringer cavalry, um, is going to roll 2d6. Yeah. And then they discard the highest because <laughs> we are going through uh, dangerous slash difficult terrain. So five gets them in. I don't need to do the swift stride die, so I won't. So yes, they will make it. We will do it for the, the Grudge Bringer, oh sorry, the, the Sven Carlson's Cavalry. Um, they also are going to roll 2d6 and it's negative one to your movement through going through dangerous terrain as well. So they have a six inch move plus, oh, uh. <laughs> getting rid of the big one. <laughs> and you know what, just to make sure I'll put their Swift Stride die in. So they get eight plus six is all of the inches that they need. So they're both in. Now let's roll these dangerous terrains. So we'll start with the Grudgebringer Cavalry. Three of them are going to clip through the template to end up aligning. Any rolls of one is a dead cavalry man. Nah, one, one of them, one of them falls and gets sucked into the realm of the dead on the way in. In they go. And then the four, <laughs> the four cavalry. All right, I'll do the champion separate because he is going through separately. So the champion, Lives Yay. and his other three boys. Yeah, all make it oh, through. Gosh. Amazing, they make it through unscathed. One grudge bringer cavalry gets sucked into the realm of the dead as they charge through. This is epic. I don't think it like you know particularly charging them in here is probably not the right choice, but. I wanted some sweet, <laughs> epic combat on what is maybe the last turn. Because um, honestly, I don't think there's actually enough space for them to wheel into combat at this point anyway. So, oh, so sad, vampires. <laughs> well, look, forget about the skeletons. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> and all these guys. Oh, I'm really just hanging into this fight and I'm fighting less than half of your army, <laughs> like realistically. Oh. Um, all right, we'll get those guys moved in and then we'll do any remaining moves and we'll be back. So. This is where everything is now, and this is where everything ends up. All right, my my little mage has just moved four inches over to there because he's trying to, to do something. These guys have slammed into the flanks of their unit. Amazing. Getting ready to butcher some zombies. And that's all the movement I've done. Now, just before we get to the end of the movement phase, I am going to try and cast a conveyance. I guess Alor as well backed away from these, <laughs> these ravening ghouls that he's just watched consume a, uh, a cannon that he was unable to open the mystic pathways for. <laughs> and he feels a bit bad. <laughs> so he is now going to attempt to open the mystical pathways for for his friend, his 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 <laughs> wizardly friend, old Luther Flamestrike. And again, he needs an eight plus on the dice. Come on, mate, do it. Let's see if we can teleport our, our battle wizard mage friend. Hey, he finally gets it. He gets the eight, sir, which goes up to a 10. So you can only fated dispel this. You haven't used a fated dispel yet, have you? Don't think so. I don't think so. Right. So you need to see a 11 on the dice. 
No. No, you don't. Wonderful. So the mystic pathways, the mystical pathways <laughs> are opened for him and he will teleport 12 inches. And boom, he travels the mystical pathways out there, putting himself in a, you know, vision line to be able to shoot some fireballs and do some things. Huzzah! Look at that. It did a thing. I love it. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> um, so that does bring us to the shooting phase. And you know what? Let's start with Luther Flamestrike. He's going to attempt to, to throw a fireball out into the graveyard. A flamestrike, even. Yes, indeed, a flood flame strike. <laughs> Go, Luther! <laughs> ah! Oh, 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 irresistible! Amazing! Yes, another double six. There's been so <laughs> many so of many. them. So <laughs> many of them. All right, 2d6, strength four hits, coming into the grave guard for seven. Very good. Wounding on fours. Oh, yeah, that's a lot. That's Ooh. mucho. Mate, that is five wounding hits. Uh, no AP, so four up armor saves to begin with. Right here. Thank you, sir. Okay. You do save one. One. One initially. Four, five up regenerates for the Drakenhof banner. One, two, three. three. You son of a gun. God damn it, V. <laughs> God damn it. So yes, Matty V should have been getting the regenerates every round. Again, doesn't matter because they've they're still at max so you wounds. Two? Um no, one. So one of them is immolated in a ball of flame. Lovely, I did it. <laughs> Um, I'll shoot my crossbowmen at them, and so there will just be the front rank of eight. They're all at long range, and uh, Corporal Fletcher is a marksman, so he will be hitting on fours. Very good, Fletcher. And then the rest of them will be coming in on fives. Getting, ooh, ooh another three. Ooh. They've been getting a pretty consistent four yeah. hits, boys. And now to wound. Strength four to toughness four, grave guard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Boo. Boo hiss. <laughs> Is Boo. there a miss crossbow table? Boo hiss to that. <laughs> <laughs> Misfire. <laughs> Misfire table. Yep, exactly. They shoot themselves in the <laughs> face. <laughs> They're like, what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> <laughs> then we've got the long bowmen slash, you know, the, the war bowmen. Um, and they only have one target, and it's these ghouls. All right, we will start with the marksman, Johan Kieler. He is needing a negative two, so he will be hitting on a five. He misses, very good. Um, the rest of the boys that aren't at long range are going to need sixes, because negative two for skirmishes and woods. Ooh, lovely, we get one. Um, and then these three are at negative three, so we'll need sevens. So sixes, which we get none of, that would then need to be going into fours. So one hit has come through. It's strength three. Their toughness four. Ha! Uh. <laughs> I feel like these guys have done nothing all game. <laughs> they got teleported. Yeah, they did. <laughs> Boy, howdy. They, they, you know, they drew some, some attention. That's, that's something. That's the shooting phase done. I think, I think I've shot all the things. And I killed a single grave guard. Um, that cannon is still trying to get, you know, the pieces <laughs> of the uh, the second inconvenience crew pulled out of it. You want to turn that one around for me? Because yep. it will be able to shoot if we go into turn six. All right, we go into the combat phase, the most <sighs> glorious of phases. So glorious. I'm just going to start with the small one because because I like to leave the most epic till last. So we come in once again with ghouls versus flagellants. Um, and we are equal initiative, so we swing out together at the same time. I will just go first because yep. typically I do nothing. So, five flagellants swinging in on fours. Ah, oh, very good. They get three hits and then wounding on fives. Ah, we no get one. one, mate. You will have your six up regen. No. Ah, excellent. A single ghoul is felled. Boom. 13 attacks back because although I killed one, we are fighting it simultaneously. Needing fours to hit, but looking for sixes. <laughs> we do get one through one and nothing six. else. Oh, that's, that's oh, a there's hit. One. There's one. But is that it? That's it. That, that can't be it. That's it. My God, Matty B. Holy <laughs> God. <laughs> that is the most atrocious roll of the game. Yeah. Important. Uh, <laughs> and then one rolling to wound mate on fours. I got two. You get it. Very nice. <laughs> two wounds come through. I will get two six up. Feel no pains against it. I make one. Whoa. Amazing. But you do kill one, Matty B. So, you killed one. I killed one. I am closed order. I win by one. Which means one of these boys crumbles and we push you back two inches. So, you will basically 
contact an enemy. So I think if you would go back two inches and contact an enemy, you just stay where you are. Right. So the combat locks, but huzzah, I won a combat with the flagellants. <laughs> they did it. They won a round. Amazing. And now we come down to the big kahuna. Two units of knights, the general, the battle standard bearer, and a huge unit of infantry all come slamming in and fighting against a huge horde of risen zombies. So epic, so cool. Let's kill some rotting flesh. Let's start with the main man himself, with Morgan Bernhardt, with his grudge bringer blade. All right, he is, now hang on, do they still have weapon skill five? All right, Van Hell's Dance Macabre does last until the start of the vampire's next start of turn sub phase. So they are still weapon skill five. I just mentioned, you know, they've gone from like the shamble and moan zombies of like, you know, the, 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 the classic, you know, dawn of the dead kind of deal. And they've been upgraded to like the scream and run zombies of like, you know, bloody 28 days later. <laughs> they're, ah, so they're super fast and hectic at the moment. So gnarly. Um, anyway, coming in with Morgan Bernhardt needing threes to hit because he is weapon skill good. Oh, he gets two hits. He is strength five with his, his sword of battle. No, it's something else. What does he get? Giant's blade. He has the giant's blade giving him plus one strength. Uh, so making him strength five. So he is killing zombies on twos. <laughs> yes, good. Yay. He does get two of them. Fabulous. Well done, Morgan. Um, you will get your two six up regions. Go one, two. There you go. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Great. <laughs> They're black! Oh my god. I'm just gonna pop two next to them for now, because yeah, that cause... is my combat res yep. for them so far. All right, we'll do the rest of the Inner Circle Knights, which will be five, five regular Inner Circle Knights come charging in, lances lowered. Um, they are weapon skill four to your weapon skill five zombies. They're super fast. So <laughs> we need to hit them on fours. Getting two out of the five hits, ugh. Oh my God, and wounding on twos for lances. Yeah. We do get them, two of them, at two six upper regens. No, Ooh. we do kill two zombies this time with the lances on the charge, fabulous. Continuing in initiative order, it would be my four regular boys. Four Carlson's Cavalry coming in, one of them is a champion, hitting on fours. Oh, getting two hits of the five, wounding on twos. Two more, mate. Six up regens. Nope. Getting two more killed by the lance heads on the charge. Boom. Um, and then we'll do all of the war horses together. Ten horses slamming in in the flank and the front, hitting on fours, because weapon skill three. Oh, the horses are mad. They're doing the yeah, business. Yeah, the horses do the business Heck every time. yeah. It's always the horses, <laughs> the most dangerous part of a knight. <laughs> um, and wounding on fours. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Four wounds from the horses, mate. Six up regions. Got one. Got one, okay, but three of them. So one, it's another regen, but three zombies do go slamming into death. Let's come down to Lieutenant Shepke. He's got two attacks. He is hitting. He's weapon skill five, so hitting on fours. Gets a hit. He's strength five, wounding on twos. He does get one, mate. Six up regen. Ooh. Hola. No. No, he does slay a zombie in single combat from the front. Um, and then it will be the rest of the Grudgebringer infantry. Five attacks from the Grudgebringer infantry, hitting on fours. Oh yeah, Ooh. they're doing it. Their swords are bloody. And they are wounding on fours. Ah, a single wound, sir. Six up regen. Ooh. Oh, God. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I'm so salty about this region. <laughs> That's all of my attacks. So it looks like I killed four from the front in total, which means you'd have three able to attack back. Um, the ones in base contact with the, the knights have been killed, so mm -hmm. you can put three back into the Grudge Bringer infantry, mate. And I can't attack from the side, can I? No, because I killed all the ones in base contact yep. on the side. So let's just quickly figure out what me fighting behind the, the defended position from the earthen ramparts gets me. So in this case, the fact that I'm behind a low linear obstacle, a defended one, gives me nothing, because all it does is make a charging unit 
that charges the defender of a low linear obstacle um, make a disordered charge. And you haven't charged me. I will get the five up ward save from it, but that is all. All right, Matty B, so that means you've still got your three dudes that can fight back into that unit. Um, do you want to put one of them into the champ? Two into the champ. Two into the champ, hitting on threes because your weapon skill five. You got one hit. Amazing, a single hit, wounding on fours. Hiya! No. No wound. And then the other two into the unit, because you had. Oh no, it was three no, guys. Yeah, yeah. The other one into the unit. Hitting, Yay. wounding on a four with your scrabbling nails. Yay. You do get it. I've got light armor and a shield, which gives me a five up armor save. No. And then ward. I have a ward save. The ward save from, from Alor, the Jade Wizard. Five up ward? Oh, that's. That's a three. <laughs> Lame. Very good. More like the Matty B can make six ups all game, but no, no five ups for Stars. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do some combat res here, Matty B. Okay. Eight killed and four regenerated. Get starting with twelve. Um, I got a flank charge. Um, I have four ranks from my Grudgebringer infantry and the the the, the Griffin standard. I have a battle standard bearer. I have a regular standard bearer across the other two units of cavalry. Um, and I have a flank charge and three closed order units. Why are you still counting? <laughs> because this is how many of your zombies is gonna crumble, mate. I need to crumble as many as I can. Um, okay, and you have a banner. You are closed order. I killed a man. And you did kill a man. Now your ranks are disrupted because I've hit you in the flank with a, a unit strength five at least unit. So you are crumbling by another this much. Let's figure out how much it is. 20. 20 zombies are crumbling from the combat res because the, 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 the magic holding them together yeah. is pulling them apart. The, the courage of the men, because you know, like, uh, death magic is all about, you know, the it's anti-life, right? And life and courage are hand in hand. So, so it feeds on fear and is, you know, uh, disrupted by courage. And the courage is bolstered from all of the damage and all of the ranks and the standards. The courage is high, and so the magic is waning. And grrr, a bunch of them just, just crumble as the magic Holy holding morning. them together. <laughs> There's two lines left. That is that many left, dear great googly moogly. <laughs> googly moogly. <laughs> um, all right, we will sweep away all of the corpses and we will get this sorted. All right, so what is left of the uh, zombie unit has pushed out on a diagonal to break contact with all of the units. My unit of infantry has decided to follow up into them and I'm going to attempt to restrain and reform my two units of cavalry. So uh, we are still negative one leadership and can't use the general's leadership. Gahoy. <laughs> so it is leadership eight for the general's unit. Come on, boys. Yes, very Ooh. good. And it would be at leadership seven for Carlson's cavalry. Carlson's cavalry, they can. Yeah, whoa. They're both restraining. Now, because I'm reforming on top of this, uh, <laughs> this thing, um, I'm assuming that that I would still have to take the dangerous terrain because we're, we are moving on it and reforming on top of it. I think it says starting, ending or moving. Indeed, and reforming is moving. So, so there they are. <laughs> they are. The other unit is not gonna move in any way. They're just going to hold there. Um, they're gonna restrain there and not move. But these guys did reform. So firstly, uh, the unit champion. Ah, oh, no. <laughs> the unit champion dies. He gets sucked into the realm of Moor, not ideal. And then the other three boys, come on! Oh no! <laughs> oh, no. Uh, and so it is the standard bearer that is left. <laughs> oh boy, and he will need to make a panic check because three of his friends just got sucked into the realm of Moor. Ah! An eight, he's leadership seven. Um, panic, can he re-roll panic? I'm pretty sure he can because of the battle standard bearer. Look, I'll roll it and then I'll check, but it might be a moot point. 
Ah, he passed point. it. He passed it. No, well, no. now I do need to make sure that yeah, yeah. that uh, battle standard bearers can reroll panic. I'm pretty sure they can. Proximity to battle standard bearers allows you to reroll panic and rally tests, and he has passed it. Huzzah! So the last man, the last of Sven Carlson's cavalry, is standing. So he will not run, even though three of his men just got sucked <laughs> into the the horrific, horrific you know tear in reality that he is still within the proximity of. He's a brave man. <laughs> um, so that's it. That is the end of the turn. That's the end of turn five. We have a very important dice roll. Who do you want to roll it, Manny B? Do you want to roll it or should I? What is, what is the roll again? What do we have to do? So on a five up, yeah. the game ends. Okay. You look like you want to roll it, mate. Yeah, I think I want to roll it. You think you want to roll it? I All right, Manny B. Good luck and Godspeed on a five up. Oh, no! the game continues to turn One, six. six. I needed it to end. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, where was your five ups and sixes all game, Matty B, you son of a gun? Well, we are doing it, guys. We are going on to turn six, but that is the end of Empire. Turn five. Vampire Counts, turn six, command phase. We've got some invocations to do. All right, mate, what are we doing? Well, first I'll get rid of this, because I think I have to do that first. Ah, yes, the, the necromancer clicks his fingers and once again, the, the, the portal is gone. Vroom, the vortex subsides, because it looks like maybe he's looking to get some charges <laughs> here. <laughs> so, yes. Um, uh, very good, and now command phase. Neck it. Who are we doing? Nahekin twice. And uh, so Ooh. who? Yep, the vampire Three. first. Yeah, 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 that's it, mate. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'll go vampire first. Vampire first, leadership test, leadership eight. Six. Six. Oh, seven. Seven, he is all good. So it's going to be D3 plus one, because he is a level one wizard. Very good for four. four. And then twice from him. Again, at leadership eight. He gets it. Oh my God, why won't you fail them? <laughs> so D3 plus four. Your rolls, uh, baby. So two, six. Six, so ten. Very good. And then the second time for his Staff of Narud. Um, again, a leadership test. Fail one, for God's sake. No, you get it again on an eight. God, <laughs> why? Um, very good. And D3 plus four again. Ah, my God. Four. Seven. Seven. <laughs> and there they are. The unit again, swollen to gargantuan size. Seventeen zombies stand back up and knit back together after they've been crumbled and destroyed. Just... <sighs> And rise, rise! <laughs> so epic. Have like a, you know, what is it? The Dark King. What's the guy from from Game of Thrones? The Night King. Yeah. He has a little Night King moment back there and just raises his hands and yeah. up they stand. As well as the one dude that was killed from this unit just stands up. Amazing. <laughs> so cool. That's command phase done. That's all the hacking to do. That's all my nahacking. Um So we go on to the conjuration phase, Matty B. I'm going to dance macabre these guys. Makes sense. All right, looking for an 8 slash 12. So that'll do. You get seven a 7. Plus 4. And 11, so you're getting the 8 version. Um, I need to beat a 7 on these two dice. And I do. Ooh. Boom, no Van Hell's dance. Uh, no dance macabre. Indeed, the macabre shall not be yours. Then we go on to the movement phase and declare charges. Do you have any charges to declare? I'm going to charge these guys at him. Very good. I am going to charge those ghouls at your archers. At my archers? Yes. Oh my, how very dare you. And those zombies at these guys. Now I don't know if I can actually do that or not. Can I? Oh yeah, you're definitely in the flank. So yeah, yep. you can get into the flank with those zombies for sure. They will declare to stand and shoot. They have to hold because they're in combat and they're unbreakable. Carlson's house guard, the last remaining man, is going to declare to flee. Yes, <laughs> so I have to, mate. Otherwise, you're just going to hit him, butcher him, and then overrun into my unit. That and is I, true. I, I can't allow that to happen. So he is going to flee, and he is going to flee 2d6 away from the unit directly, going 7 inches. Do I want to add a swift stride to that? Because it is a choice. Ah, you know what? For the hell of it, I will. I don't think it hurts me either way. Beautiful. So we are going back um 11 no sorry 12 inches all right so usually because a friendly unit fled through them regardless of their unit strength that would cause and force a panic check but because there is a grand master in a knightly order unit 
they become immune to psychology and automatically a pass panic test. So no panic test is needed for my unit. Um, and we've had a good look at the distance here for a charge and it is just outside for the amount that they would have to wheel to get past the zombies to get into combat. It's just over a 10, which means they can't redirect into them because it would just mean a fail charge. So it will be a failed charge for the Grave Guard. So roll your 2d6, Matty B, to see how far forward we're going. Yep, yeah. we got a six. All right, nice. You are going six inches forward, Matty B. And that is where the Grave Guard unit end up. These zombies, let's roll them up, Matty B. They're making the charge as well. Oh, that's true. Indeed, they've got a four inch charge, plus a D6, plus four is more than enough. So that one would get into base contact, that one would get into base contact, and then the other two would form up behind. And then these guys, let's, um, um, it's gonna be, Negative three still because you're in the woods, you're skirmishing, and negative one for standing and shooting. Here we go. Negative three to the marksman Johan Kila needs a six. Nope, very good. <laughs> and then sevens for everyone else. I need a bunch of sixes here. This is your chance, boys. You've been shooting at these guys the whole game. <laughs> your chance now that they're running towards you. Find your, your, your marksmanship. Ah, we get one so far. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> now I need to roll that into a four plus. Ha! Huh. No, very good. We get zero hits. Lovely. All right, mate. Let's roll that charge. Eight inch charge to get the front guy in. I need to get higher than that. Indeed. I got ah, there you go. You got the six. <laughs> so that is 11 inches. Let's get him in. And there they are, the ghouls have made contact with Keeler's war bowmen. Excellent, there it is. The charge phase is complete. Um, did you have any conveyance spells you wanted to cast? Yes. Very good, you're gonna try uh, Steed of Shadows yes, again or whatever it is. Yep, got nine plus for this one. Fantastic, let's see it, Matty B. I've got an eight, eight plus, plus four, four. to 12. A 12, I need to see your nine on these 2d6. Get out of here! Now a five. So he does get the spectral steed, Matty B. Okay, that's the conveyance spell cast. So now mm -hmm. we would go on to remaining moves. So this is where everything is now. And this is where everything ends up. All right, the, uh, the master necromancer calls his dark acolyte to him, casting spectral steed so he can fly 10 inches over to here to finally get relevant in the game. <laughs> um, uh, the master walks forward to, to get within ranges of things. And the poor, poor skeletons and White King continue to do their truffle shuffle up the field in, in ignominy <laughs> <laughs> and, and disgrace. Um, all right, that's the moving phase done, mate. It's shooting phase time. You're gonna cast some magic missiles at me? I believe so. Fabulous, give it a crack. I'm gonna unquiet spirits then. Very good, with your, with your master necromancer. Master time. Very good, he's gonna attempt to again rake me with spectral, spectral spirits. Eight plus. You get it on the 10. So 14. All right, I need an 11 to stop it on the dice. Come on, show me an 11. Hell, give me a double six. Double one? No. Double one. No, rats can't. Why? <laughs> Why? Why? Gosh. All right, here we are again on the miscast table. Uh, oh, boy. The outclassed table. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what we get. And I'm going to remember this time that I can re-roll the result because I have an earthing rod on that, on Luther Flame Strike. So, hi -ya! We get a seven. Careless Conjuration. The wizard mispronounces a syllable, causing the dispel to backfire, knocking them to the ground. The wizard suffers a single strength four hit with AP negative one. Um, you know what? That's not too bad. I will take that. So he takes a single strength four hit. He takes a wound on a three plus. He does take the wound, bugger. <laughs> He's got- No saves. Yeah, no saves. So he goes down to one not wound remaining. Ugh, oh, that's, that's spicy. Um, all right, mate. So three rake, hits, rake my hits. unit with the, with the spectrals. So I got a nine. Nine. Yep. Nine of them killing on fives. Mm. One. I see three. Two. Three. Very good. All right, mate. Remove three horsemen for me, please. Uh, and there it is, my very, now very small unit. <laughs> three more of the grudge throwers killed by spectral fiends. Because... Um, that would be a panic test. No panic, because they are immune. Mm -hmm. um, lovely. What's next, mate? 
Um, I am going to hit them again with Mind Razor. Very good. So that's a seven plus. Yep, and this is from... Little Man. The Acolyte. Yes, yeah. very good. Uh, eight. You do get an eight, sir. So ten. Yes, ends up as a ten. Um, so you've got an eight. I just need to beat the ten. What do we get? Here we go. Not a double one. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do. Yeah. I do. I beat it. No mind razor, sir. I'm going to Spiritual Vortex. The casting value is eleven. This is the big one. Fantastic. Uh, just to add that leadership debuff. Indeed. It's um, been doing good work. <laughs> Here we go. So six plus four. Plus four is ten. ten no, it doesn't go off, so no vortex this round. At last, a spell that you didn't just get. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I'm not salty. <laughs> You're salty. <laughs> so that means we go on to the close combat phase, and we've got a few of them, Matty B. Mm -hmm. We've got three across the field. Where do you want to go? I'll start at the top again. Start over here. We'll work our way down. So the ghouls that are, you know, fresh from killing the cannon in the woods, their their, their, their slavering jaws are coated in blood, their fingernails have skin underneath them. Gross. Here they go. So you've got 11 attacks with the ghast. Very good, sir. All right, mate, hitting on fours. So one order room and three hits. Very good. So yeah, just put the six to the side and then you need fours to wound with the three hits, mate. Very good, you Two. get three wounds in total. I feel like they don't have any armor, but I'll check real quick. No light armor, you do just kill three of them. Three of them go down. Um, so that would be three from the fighting rank, which would leave me with one, two, three, four, five to fight back. Hitting on fours, weapon skill three, two weapon skill three. Very good, getting two hits um, and wounding on fives. A single wound, sir, six up regen. Nah, we kill a goal. A ghoulie ghoul, lovely. So, you killed three. I killed one. That is all the things. I lose by two. They would be leadership seven men down to leadership five. Oop, no. Drop dice, never count. Leadership five? Oh! Six. No, seven. So, we do, we, we fail our, our modified leadership of five, but we pass our unmodified leadership of seven. So we are going to fall back in good order. So we are going to roll 2d6 and uh, remove the highest. So we're gonna go back a single inch. Would you like to follow up? Yeah. Yes, makes sense. <laughs> There's no reason to restrain. Lovely. The combat is won, but not decisively. Um, down to here next. Yeah. Fantastic. So uh, the ghouls charge, so they're gonna have the highest initiative, so they will go first. Oh, sorry, not the ghouls, the zombies. So two zombies striking first on fours. No. Very good. Um, and then everyone else is gonna be going simultaneously. I'll just go first again because I never remove any models and it's easier to remember. Um, we'll, put, we'll put one of them into the zombies and three of them into the ghouls. So one into the zombies on threes, huzzah, and fours. Huzzah! I kill a zombie. Well, slash six up ward? No, I kill a zombie. Um, and then the three into the ghouls on fours. Nothing. All right, sir. Ghoulies. 13 hitting on fours. Oh, wow. There's a lot of auto wounds and a lot of hits. All right. So four poison auto wounds and three hits. Um, so just pop the, those ones to the side. Beautiful. Sorry, that, that's all good. Wounding on fours. You get a ball, <laughs> you son of a gun. Um, all right, how many is that, me? Seven wounding hits from the ghouls. And I've got six up, feel no pine, ward saves. I make not a one of them. <laughs> that is the unit wiped. You have finally destroyed the flagellants. Oh, the fluggies. All of them finally go down and they meet the doom they knew was coming. <laughs> Uh, but they were right in the end. They were right. <laughs> Do you want to overrun with either of your units? You know, that would send your girls that way and it would send them that way. All right, we are going to restrain and reform with the ghouls and we are going to overrun with the zombies. So overrunning with the zombies, 2d6. They're going to go five inches straight along that line. We'll get them moved. All right, and the ghouls have decided to reform, entering the open order formation. So from skirmish to open order, preparing to potentially flank charge and therefore break the ranks of my infantry. That's spicy. That's a cool little thing, going from, from skirmish to, to open order to closed ranks. Yeah. Ghouls, people, that's pretty cool. And then we have 
The final combat for the phase, the continuation of the slaughter of the rotting dead <laughs> and the grudge bringer infantry. Um, so ghouls go down now to initiative one, which means my guys are striking first. And we will start with, with, uh, with Lieutenant Shepke and his sword of might. So weapon skill five to weapon skill two, needing twos, yeah. He gets them both. He is strength five to toughness three. He's wounding on twos as well. He gets them both on twos. Just enough to lop off heads. Six up regens, sir. No. No, not this time. Another two zombies go down to Shepke. He is at this point coated head to foot <laughs> in zombie gore and brains and filth. Um, and then it's going to be the rest of the unit. Another five attacks from the rest of the Grudgebringer infantry needing threes to hit. Ooh, <laughs> getting two hits, Ugh. Um, and fours to wound. A single wound, sir, a single six up regen. Yep. Nope. Nada. All right, we killed three from the front back, from the front rank. That means you've got seven to fight back. Oh, sorry, not seven, you've got four, four. of the seven to fight back. Um, do you want to allocate any attacks into Shepke or the champion? Honestly, probably not wanting to go for Shepke because he's got good armor and yeah. toughness. Yeah, I might go the champion. I might go two champion and then two to the rest. Very good. So, so two, two in the champion, looking for fours. Got one. I was looking for, ah oh yeah, fours, yes. Getting one hit and then fours to wound. That's a five. There it is, that is a wound. I will have a five up light armor and shield armor save. Yes, Ooh. it clangs off the armor, the, the champion continues. And then two into the general boys on fours. General boys? Yes, yeah, general boys. <laughs> <laughs> Getting a hit um, and fours to wound. Getting a wound, another five up shield and light armor save. No, nope. and then a five up ward save oh, yeah. from the, the the earthen ramparts that we that we were behind. No, <laughs> we still kill another boy. Ouch, it hurts, dear gosh. Um, all right, sir. So I killed three. I still have my four ranks from my Griffin standard. Oh, oh. <laughs> I may have been doing things wrong with the Griffin Standard. I just remembered, I'm pretty sure one of the drawbacks of the Griffin Standard is you can't chase. <laughs> like, I think you have to hold. Ah, I'm going to have to check that, but that's an annoying mistake. It means that I shouldn't have been following up into combat. Ugh. But anyway, let's continue and I'll check that afterwards. Three wounds, four ranks, and a banner, and closed order. Um, you got a kill, you've got a banner, and you also claim three ranks because you are Horde and Closed Order. So three of them crumble, sir. We get three crumbles. Very good. And so these men are swept away um, and you will get pushed back two inches. And that is where the zombies end up. Now I did check the Griffin standard does not mean that they have to hold, that they can pursue. That is a thing from older editions. Um, so in this edition, you just get the rank bonuses and there's no negatives. There's no but involved in the standard. Um, I'm gonna attempt to restrain and reform rather than following up anyway. And I do on the nine. Um, and I will just reform the unit to get me a couple more boys in the fighting rank. Just a chuk chuk, just like so. Um, that's it. That is the turn. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh my god, I'm drained, people. This, yeah. Is, yeah. this has been a grind of a game, oh my goodness. Uh, but that seems to be this, this edition. But yeah. that is it. That is the end of Vampire Counts, turn six. Empire, turn six. Hopefully the last turn of the game. <laughs> I'm really hoping. <laughs> Uh, partly because I'm not in a good position for this game to continue, but also I just, I'm ready. I'm ready for it to end. It's been a long game. Um, uh, let's, let's do it. So nothing to do in the command phase. This would actually have been the only time I would have something to do. I could do rallying cry from my general, but because the fleeing unit is below 25% their starting uh, number, they're just going to continue to flee. They cannot rally. Um, so no rallying cry. We go into conjuration phase. Um, I am going to attempt to conjure the curse of arrow attraction onto the big unit of the grave guard um, with Luther flame strike, and we need a seven plus. Hooah! And we do get it on a seven, which becomes a whatever, an <laughs> eleven. 11. <laughs> you need to beat the seven though, mate. Eight. Eight. Oh, I don't no, think so. No, a three. So they will be cursed. With so the, cursed. The arrow attraction. Bloop. 
Yeah, I'll put I'll try to put the earthen ramparts onto onto my unit of knights to give them a award save. <laughs> See if we can get them a ward save. It means they won't be able to march, but they're not marching anyway. Um, Matty B, can you can you see how far away I am? Because I do need to be within 15 inches of Alor. Nah, nah, he's out of range. No, out of range by like an inch, half an inch thereabouts. So no earthen ramparts for them. I will attempt to cast Curse of Cowardly Flight <laughs> to make to push <laughs> them back two inches. Keep them back from from Luther Flame Strike. We need a nine plus. Oh, and we get the nine, so you need to beat the nine, mate. It goes up by four, but really we're equal, so it's just the dice that we need to worry about. I don't think it. You do not. All right, then it's going to be a leadership test for that unit. Leadership mm -hmm. eight. And I need to get under. Yes, equal or under. Aha, no. you fail! <laughs> Amazing. So let's look at this. It's weird that this happens, but let's have a look, see. The target enemy unit must immediately make a panic test. If the target unit automatically passes any panic test it is required to make for any reason, it must still make this test, and should it fail, it will give ground. And there they are, after having been pushed back two inches. Fabulous. Um, that is the end of my conjuration phase, which would begin my, my movement phase and declare charges. I will declare a charge for my, my Grudge Bringer infantry back into this unit. They will need to pass a leadership test to be able to charge because you do outnumber me. Yeah, and we are, we oh, are, we are, north. we are very brave. Um, I'll roll it just because there we go, the five, <laughs> and we are just going to go slamming it back into them. Maximizing contact, lovely, there we go. That's my only charge, because I'm not charging my Grudge Bringers into that unit, just to have Sorry. them eaten, <laughs> <laughs> eaten by the vampire. It's, you know, it would just be foolish. Yeah. So they're not gonna do it. Um, that, that means that's, that's that done. Do I have any conveyance spells I want to cast? Oh wait, I need to, I need to flee that guy. He should have continued to flee in the rally fleeing troops phase. So he is going to run at 2d6, <laughs> three inches just continuing in a straight line straight down that path very good i'm not going to add the swift stride die because no reason to i'm going to try and keep him away from running through those guys for as long as possible yeah all right i am going to try and get some conveyance spells going i'm basically just going to back away from them while continuing to face them to try and shoot them and do things so i'm going to start by backing up that unit 3.5 inches and there they are, backed up, and then I'm going to attempt to um, uh, cast Arcane Urgency on them to allow them to move a second time. This needs to be cast on a 10+, plus from Luther Flame Strike. Um, and I get a 6, goes up to a 10, sir. Do you want to try and stop it? Yeah. You lame son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I got a 6 and a 4, so it's 10. 10, lame. <laughs> Six and four is ten, so no, no spell for me. Uh, and they only travel the mystic pathways if I have not moved. So that's the only conveyance spell. Lovely, we have backed up in range for earthen ramparts. I will try and put it on them with my, with Alor, my jade wizard. He needs to see an eight on the dice. Oh! And he gets it, a nine plus two is an 11, sir. You can't dispel it with either of you. I should check, are you within 24 inches? You have moved up with him now. Yeah. Damn, I should have moved back before casting the spell. I didn't, such is life. Um, so you can attempt to dispel it, sir. You so need to beat 10. my 11. Oh, beat 11. Six. Yes, nine, and yep. you do. No, no ward spell, no ward save for them. Lame. Um, and I think that's it. I think it's my movement phase done. So let's just rock and roll straight into the shooting phase. Um, I will start with um, the Ruby Ring of Ruin slash the Grudge Bringer Sword. We're going to cast the fireball at the unit because why the heck not? Um, needing a 8 plus. We get a 7 plus 1, 2. Um, so, mate, that is a 9. I got a 6. Which is a 10. Lame. <laughs> um, then we will try it from Luther Flame Strike into the unit again, needing a, a an 8 in total. We get a 7. So you just need to beat the 7 on 2d6, Matty B. You do. Mm. Very good. Let's shoot some other stuff. We're going to start with the cannon. Mm. This is this is the cannon that has misfired twice in a row. <laughs> <laughs> so again, we're just going to try and bounce on a line that is going to go through as many ranks as I can. Eight inches from the front of the unit. I'm going to go eight inches from the front to begin with. 
Let's see how we go. I need to see an eight here to land it on the front man. A six. That's pretty good. So I'm two inches from the front currently. And now give me a big bounce. A four. So we are going at two inches into the unit. We end up hitting three grave guard. Grrk. Not too shabby. Uh, we are wounding them on twos. Because strength good. <laughs> <laughs> strength good. Uh, but lovely. And we do get one armor bane, sir. So no armor save against mm -hmm. that one. And then you'll get two. It's negative two. So you get two six ups against this one. Okay. Nope. So no. And then two five up regens. You do one. regen one. So, t uh, sorry. And one more right five up regen. We didn't roll the one for the no armor save. Nope. No, so two of them get smashed with a cannonball. Plop. Boom, it comes shrieking out, lands in front and smashes through two Graveguard. Lovely. And then my crossbowmen, here we go. It's a moment of redemption for them. <laughs> they are all in range. 18 shots, here we go. Um, we are over half range, so Corporal, Corporal Fletcher needs a four to hit. He misses, lame. And then the rest of them need fives and I will be re-rolling ones for the Curse of Arrow Attraction. Come on, boys, yeah. We got one. Oh, mate. A couple of ones, three at least. Yeah, we've gotten four hits so far and we have three, four, five nice. ones to re-roll. Nice. Not too shabby. Was that a miss? That looks like a hit. That is, that's a five. That's a hit, heck yeah. <laughs> that's pretty good. Let's re-roll these bad boys. Ah, for no help. Nice work, Curse of Arrow Trash. <laughs> but we did get five hits in the end. Strength four to toughness four. Um, wounding on fours. Getting a single wound. <laughs> God, it always... Ah. Um, uh, that is just no, no armor penetration, mate. So a four up armor save. Yeah, yep. and you save it. Very good. It clangs off the old burnished plate armor and ting, ting. off it goes. Um, oh man, shooting just feels so bad. I don't know why. Maybe it's just bad dice, but it's it's had zero impact in this game. Zero impact from shooting. Um, but there you go. Let's go into combat. It's maybe the final combat game phase of the game. Let's come down here. Um, we are equal initiative, so we strike at the same time. So I'll just do all of mine first. Eight attacks, hitting on fours. Getting three hits and fives to wound. Not a single wound, sir. You can strike back. Nine attacks coming back, hitting on fours. Uh, getting two poison and that's it. That's so it. just two auto wounds. You just kill two, mate. Boom, boom. Two of them go down, which means you win by two. They go down to leadership five from leadership seven. Ah! Or oh, we have rolled above our unmodified leadership, which means we are breaking and fleeing, just like good old fantasy. <laughs> Would you like to chase, sir? I might as well. Indeed. All right. Well, I am going to flee 2d6, which is seven. You need to meet a seven to catch them, sir. Seven. And you do, you do, you cut them down. Block, 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 block. The, 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 dwar the dwarves, the ghouls, <laughs> the ghouls chase them down and start ripping and tearing and smash them into oblivion. And that is where they end up, out yonder after butchering and they start to consume the corpses that they've cut down. Keeler's longbowmen are no more. Ah, so sad. Um, all right, and we come down to what is hopefully the final combat of the game. <laughs> it is the last one. It's the continued fight between the Grudgebringer infantry and the zombies. All right, and we are going to start with Lieutenant Shepke, and he is swinging out, needing a twos to hit, because weapon skill five to weapon skill two. Gets two hits and twos to wound for strength five to toughness three. Two, a down, sir. Will they regenerate with their unholy life? One, one of them will. Ah, <laughs> you're never ending six ups. It feels bad. So one died. Yep, one is dead. And then five regular boys on threes. Getting at four hits and fours. Getting three wounds, sir. Three six up regens. Ah, nope. very good. And we do just slay three of them. So, mate. Four went down, which leaves you with three remaining to fight back. Mm -hmm. All into the unit, needing fours to hit. Two okay. hits, needing fours to wound. One, One wound. 
A five up armor save, and it is failed. Another man falls. Black. Oh wait, I had an extra attack because I went into another rank. One more attack coming through <laughs> on threes and fours. Nah, very good. Meant nothing. Um, now, this is where I made a mistake because these aren't heavy infantry. I needed that fifth man for that rank. So instead we are getting, we killed four and one regenerated. We have two ranks from the Griffin standard now because we actually only have a single rank bonus. We have a standard and we're closed order. You killed one, you've got a standard and your closed order. You will crumble by six. Uh, and that is where the zombies end up. I am going to test to restrain with the Grudgebringer infantry uh, needing to roll a nine or under. They do, they will hold and restrain. And that is the end of the turn. Holy bajoy. And possibly the end of the game. So. You can roll it this I'll one. roll this one on a roll of four plus the game comes to an end. Let's see, here we go. Do we end the battle here on a four plus? Yes, it does. The end of turn six marks the end of the game. Um, it's, I'm not sure, I don't think I've won. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be honest, I don't think I've won because um, uh, you've killed my dead pile. Looks like this. <laughs> and Maddie B's dead pile is, is down there, though I killed Oh, there's you know, ghouls as well. A lot of stuff. Yeah, there's some ghouls as well, but that's fine. Um, all right, so look, there it is. We're gonna need to, to calculate this to see who won. It's looking probably like a minor victory or like a, a victory for the vampire counts. Maybe a tie if I'm lucky, but, but probably not. So look, there it is. We're gonna actually have to figure out who wins before we can find out who, who gets Isabella von Liebachus. <laughs> Whether it is the vampire or whether the grudge bringers, you know, somehow at this point had sent a scouting party in there to get her out and we've just been playing a holding, you know, <laughs> a him. holding action. Yeah, you just can get in there. <laughs> um, uh, but there it is, guys. We're going to figure out who is the winner and then we are going to have a bit of a chat about this game in the post game. And there it is, there it is. So at the end of the game, it was victory points 572 to the vampire counts and 489 to the empire, making it a difference of 83 points, which makes it a draw. <laughs> a draw, <laughs> it needs to be 100 points of difference to claim a victory. Mate, good game. Excellent. Good Excellent. game. A fun game. Mm. Now look, let's be honest, the only reason I eked out a draw is because I fought half of Matty B's <laughs> army. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, the vampire and the graveguard never saw combat. The skeletons the and the White King mm. never saw combat. They were just cruising around. <laughs> Getting so, stuck behind stuff. you know, I managed to eke out a draw by not fighting his scary things, essentially. Um, uh, some of that was by choice and some of that was because of poor unit placement slash terrain. Terrain, terrain played a huge factor in this game. You know, we rolled out randomly what we got and we scattered them around. So we didn't really have much choice in agency in what we got, which frankly, I actually really like. Yeah, yeah, that's the, yeah. that's the no, way that's that great. I enjoy placing terrain. Yeah, yeah. There's a little bit of agency, but otherwise yeah. the pieces we're using are randomly generated. Um, and then we get to put them in one of six quadrants and then we scatter them 2d6. Mm. Yeah. Um, so there is a lot of just kind of, there's a bit of strategy, but there's a lot of just getting what you get. Um, having to deal with it. And having to deal with it, <laughs> indeed. Um, a, big, a big factor in this game for the Vampire Council was of course not taking um, uh, Hellish Vigor. The spell Hellish Vigor would have made a big difference. Huge difference. Yeah. Um, uh, neither of us quite knew the impact that yeah. that spell would have because looking at the list, I was like, we talked about it a lot. You know, yeah. I, I wrote this list for Matty B. Mm. I, didn't, I didn't write what spells he should choose, but we talked about yeah, it. Yeah. And I was like, well, a lot of your fast stuff already oh, has a reserve move, right? The dogs have reserve moves. I've put a banner on the knights to give them a reserve move. The ghouls have a reserve move. The bats, the bats mm. can fly. Yeah. So all the fast stuff was already moving really fast. And I was like, 
do you really need a spell that's mm. going to give just your three infantry blocks a reserve move? Maybe, you know, those yeah. other spells sound pretty good. Um, absolutely, yeah. absolutely 100% necessary for the vampire counts because oh, that would yeah. have, you know, doubled the speed of, you know, those mm. units. Um, I think you can only target one, although there's a large one that targets all, yeah, yeah, all the like, units on the table. I think it's an 8-12, isn't it? Yeah, like yeah. an 8-12. As an 8, it's one yeah. unit, one undead unit. Um, on the 12, it's all undead mm. units get a reserve move. So, so that spell would have been completely game-changing. And, you know, mm. first time this faction has been used on my channel, first time Matty B's ever used it, and it's the first time I've obviously played against it. But we've learned a big lesson about mm. vampire counts this game. Yeah. That spell, pivotal. Very good. Pivotal. Um, so that was one of the big ones. Um, uh, what else? You know, choosing to put the skeletons on the far flank. Yes. Meant that they never the made zombies it. Zombies and the skeletons. The zombies and the skeletons, mate. That's what we should have done. <laughs> you know, I did. I did barrack for yeah, it. I, know <laughs> I was yeah, like, I mate, the is. skeletons. You're like, nah, the zombies are chaff. Throw them in the middle. <laughs> and, and they did do a good job at that. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. they fought my entire combat army and did not quite crumble. No. So that was an epic fight. Um, if the game had ended on turn five, it would have been an empire victory. Because yes. at that point, the flagellants weren't dead, the longbowmen weren't dead, um, uh, you hadn't yet claimed 25% of my cav, yeah. I think. No, um, or, you know, my, my, my other unit of cavalry weren't yet fleeing, because yeah. um, you got 50% of their points, because they were <laughs> fleeing at the end of the game. Sven Carlson's cavalry, he's, he's heading home to yeah. talk to Sven, like, Sven, Sven, we didn't <laughs> manage to get her. <laughs> oh, because this is it. Like, what yeah. happens? What happens to Isabella now because of the draw, right? What happens? Is it that... Is it that the vampire doesn't get her, but we didn't get her, but she managed to escape her bonds and flee into the mountains and maybe just get eaten by wolves? <laughs> <laughs> well, the orcs have her. Yeah, yeah, she's captured by the orcs Ooh. now. The vampires don't get her. We, the grudge bringers, weren't able to secure her and get her back. Um, in the end, it was a stalemate, and eventually the two forces just had to split with too much damage being done. Isabella has escaped and no one knows where she is, if she's even alive. That's pretty great. I That's like good. that as the fluff. That's fantastic. <laughs> maybe captured by wolves. Yes, yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe dead by wolves. Or yeah. maybe still becoming the hero that she deserves and is making her way home. Home to Carl. <laughs> home to her cousin. Um, uh, man, your vampire accounts still seem pretty strong. Pretty strong. The fact yeah. that, you know, half of your army essentially beat, <laughs> like, you know, yeah. most of mine. And most of it's to do with the raising of the dead again. Of right? course, yeah, yeah. which is an integral, an integral yeah. mechanic that they and have. obviously the six up or five up uh, regeneration. The regeneration was coming in a lot that we learnt, you know, is uh, the whole army isn't flammable. I had it in my head for some reason that everyone was it flammable. Makes sense. Like, yeah, exactly. They're undead. Yeah, you yeah. you cremate them and they're yeah. gone. But no, no, it is just vampires yeah. that are susceptible to fire, which again also makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, the the regen was huge. Your rolls on the regens oh, yeah. were amazing. No, enough. <laughs> so often things are getting regenerated on six ups. So wow. Um, I think my empire list definitely needs some tinkering. I need to add some units to it and, you know, um, you know, sub some things in and out. Um, great cannons did almost nothing. To be honest, my shooting in general felt like it did not a lot. No. Or at least it felt that way because anytime I did some wounds, the wounds were back yeah. the next turn. So you need bigger hits. Yeah, I could yeah. never do enough damage that the damage actually continued to make an effect. I never did enough that you couldn't just heal it back. Which either means that I need a lot more shooting, which means I also have less combat troops. Yeah. So it's a tough one. The vampire counts, you know, they used to be relatively susceptible to shooting. Um, but now because you can res without needing a, it's not a spell, so there's no way for me to stop it. Yeah, that's You just right. need a leadership test. Yeah, it's, it's just a leadership test. And if you pass it, you're no good. Ability. And for whatever reason, you pass those leadership tests oh. all but once. Yeah. You failed a single leadership <laughs> test to, to res the zombies. So that was probably part of it as well. Your, your dice were hot this they game, were hot this game. They were hot. The hottest they've ever been. Hot, hot, indeed. <laughs> indeed, it was, a, it was a good showing for Maddie yeah. B. So that's pretty awesome. Um, 
yeah, the laws of uh, the law of necromancy, the, the couple yeah. of, that seems pretty good. You know that the the spiritual vortex is really good. Yeah. There's got a lot of a lot of utility with that yeah. one, creating the dangerous terrain. But also the big one for that is minusing the leadership and not allowing them to use their inspiring yeah. presence. That that has a lot of utility in this game. So that's a great vortex. Um, and unquiet spirits is again an amazing magic missile. Yeah. Um, in my two games of Old World now, I have been slammed by magic missiles that have no armor save, that yeah. negate armor, right? That's the main thing. Low strength, high number magic missile damage that has no armor save allowed. Mm. And man, it's brutal. Mm. Like that spell killed, what, six? Six, six of my knights mm. over the course of the game. And I lost one to dangerous terrain, <laughs> through, which was again that vortex. Yeah. Um, that was brutal. Um, so yeah, you know, that seems like a good law. Necromancy is a decent law of magic. Um, I was not wowed by battle magic, or at least by the spells that I got. Yeah. Fireballs, again, were not, were not amazing, mainly because I was shooting them at units that had a high armor save and a regen. Yeah. Um, and for the most of the game, we weren't even using the regen, but you still just managed to, to raise them back. Yeah, exactly. But even so, you know, because it has no AP, yes, it's strength four and 2d6 of them, but no AP, you shouldn't be shooting them at heavily armored dudes. That yeah. should be for chaff. Um, but it felt like there was no point to be throwing them at zombies, just knowing that they can just get raised yeah. straight back in large numbers. But but so can the Grave Guard, yeah. you know, so I don't know. It, nothing felt like the right choice, to be <laughs> honest. At least the Grave Guard don't go over their original number. Indeed, yeah. which is which is an interesting one. Yeah. Um, you know, put it in the comments if you think we played that correctly, to yes. be honest. It, it feels like it's the only way to do it. Because what else would you use it for? Indeed, indeed. It's like, yeah, 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 you can't, because the, the problem with the wording is it says heal, heal, right? And heal implies that they need to have already taken wounds. Which means, you know, if that's the case, if you can't target them with the spell once they haven't taken, if they haven't taken wounds. Mm. So let's say the first time you use it, they, they lose a single wound, lose a single wound and you're like, sweet, I want to res that zombie. And it takes them above their, their, um, their starting points by, or starting numbers by three, whatever. Yeah. At that point, that means you can't like, res so, it again. you can't res it again until they take a wound yeah. and then you heal them again, heal again yeah. and it happens to go above it. So like the, that whole rule seems like it makes no sense unless, unless. you can just target them with invocation to mm. make the unit bigger. Um, so that's how I'm playing it at the moment because it feels like the only reason that that rule exists is for that purpose. Um, but obviously we're going to be looking for a fact to find out exactly. And once I get a fact, I'll play it rules as written. Yeah. But, but right now, that's how I'm doing it. But I tell you what, that unit got real big. It got real big. <laughs> it got real big. Max was 49. And real nasty. Yeah. Um, I own 60 zombies in my collection. <laughs> Could have got them. Yeah, yeah. 60 <laughs> painted and built zombies ready to go. And that's that's a big unit of zombies, let me tell you. Um, the staff of Deneru or Deneru. something like that um, is a great item. Allowing the double <laughs> invocation on your level four wizard is oh, yeah. that's a win. That's a I would take I would uh, take that every time. Well. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, like Matty B had a read of the backstory, and it's like a French necromancer, a Bretonian necromancer. Yes, of course, Bretonian, yeah. <laughs> French Bretonian. <laughs> um, and yeah, he was muddling around with it and raised too much of them, and they ate him. So. <laughs> Raised too many yeah. zombies, and yeah, they just they overtook him. He couldn't he control couldn't them. control them, yeah. and of course, so his his amazing scepter allows you to just raise heaps of stuff. <laughs> so it takes a strong necromancer mm. to properly wield the scepter of Dinaru. This um, guy, so good, yeah, that guy, <laughs> that master necromancer. What a dog. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure what the answer is with my mm. with my empire list that I have at this stage. I definitely want to add some stuff to it. Um, yeah, great cannons don't feel like they're in a great place. Funnily enough, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, they are 125 points, and I didn't I didn't get a lot of utility out of them. Um, 
but maybe that's because I wasn't shooting them well. Hard to tell. Um, but I would definitely drop one for a Hellblaster. Hellblaster yeah. volley gun would be a lot of fun. Love anything that's gonna <laughs> dong, 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 dong. love yeah. that shit. So um, we'd drop a hel- we'd drop one of those for that. Maybe try a mortar as well. Mm. Throwing out big templates, seeing if yeah, that does some stuff. Go. That'd be pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, I would love to get some great swords in the oh, army. Yeah. Maybe maybe sub out the. Um, you know, Keeler's Longbowman, who who didn't do much at all. <laughs> they drew some ghouls to them and eventually <laughs> got, got butchered by them, but, but that's kind of all they did. So I'd sub them out, uh, maybe reduce the size of the crossbowman on the hill, um, bring in some great swords, you know, just tinker around. So a unit of great swords and a hell blaster is something that I would love to add to this mm. list to sub some things in and out a bit. Maybe a warrior priest. I'm a warrior priest would be pretty cool. Yeah, do love the stuff. priest of Sigma, indeed. That could do some interesting things. I haven't really looked into their prayers, but mm. surely that'd be a bit of fun. I think there's some healing in there. Mm, maybe, maybe, maybe mm. some healing, maybe something. Um, but yeah, what a game, what a cool game. It was unfortunate to not see the big scary units get into combat, the the vampire and the grave guard. It's sad when, yeah. when the general doesn't make combat and Partly, that was me just not wanting to fight him. <laughs> because yeah. he would have smashed Morgan Bernhardt. He yeah. would have just absolutely wiped the floor with him. You know, if it came to the crunch, I would have fought him. And if, you know, I was in a position to fight him with my whole unit, still with first charge and yeah. get the charge, I would have given that a crack. But at the point when I finally had a chance and I was oh, down to three. like three to four guys, yeah. <laughs> I was near the end of the game. I was like, no, I'm not just throwing my general into the meat grinder. No, nope, not doing it. <laughs> uh, and I eked out a draw, just, <laughs> just. Ah, but there it is, guys. There it is, an awesome game, a lot of fun, and a really close game, close enough yeah. that, that there is no victor. <laughs> and we are both in defeat and disgrace and could not get Isabella, von mm. Lieberhutz. Um, but there it is. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. If you did, you know, smash a like on the video. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. If you're new here, you know, just, just smash that subscribe button, guys, and you're just going to get more of my videos in your feed when I upload them. Um, if you want to go the extra mile and you want to support the channel, consider becoming a channel member. You hit the, the join button. It takes you to another page where you can have a look at the different the different tiers you can use to support us. It doesn't lock you into anything initially. So if you want to have a look, hit that join button. Um, follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Links in the description. But until next time, I'm Stoss. This is Matty B. Happy Wargaming. And be good to your mother.